When someone enters another world, they gain the most powerful skills and play an active role. Everything had to be according to the standard, as it was considered by the system. But still, maybe it wasn't like that. So the young man came into this world, using his power, finally saw that all his labors had worked. When he tried to use the stone, the boy finally finished the pavement that was right in front of him. The officer, addressing the young man, thanked him for fixing the pavement. Now it will be easier for them to trade. At that moment, the boy was happy that he could help people. After all, he was not someone who could kill the strongest enemies with one blow, and was not even a chosen hero. But there were people whom he pleased and it was also good for him. Addressing the two men who stood in front of him, the boy suggested that they go home. One of the men couldn't believe that a six-year-old child had built this road. Our hero was just a good-natured man. This is a story about a kid who uses his memories from a previous life. Our hero's name is Michio Tsuchida. As always, in his previous life he was on a side job. The young man was walking home from work on his day off. It was that day when our hero was returning home, in his former world, that he heard someone screaming. Then he saw a man grab the girl, explaining that in two minutes he would be in another world and dedicated this child to Murga's Sama. Addressing this man, he asked to be transferred to another world. The mother, who was standing in front of the criminal with her daughter, desperately asked to let her daughter go. Our hero saw this and tried to understand what was going on and what the police were doing, because she was nowhere to be seen. At that moment, when everyone was desperately trying to call for help, our hero felt like he was shivering. Bad things happened to him when he was shivering and it was not at the right time. The young man decided that he had to leave as soon as possible, making his way through the crowd. But then he realized that the man had grabbed the child, and everyone thought that this man had gone crazy. Our hero could not leave it like that and therefore rushed to help the child. The next moment, when our hero covered the girl with his body, the criminal rushed at him shouting that now he would be free. The enemy stuck a knife in our hero. Just at this moment, when the young man was already attacked with a knife, the criminal shouted to stop interfering with him. But then the police came and asked him not to run amok, twisting the man. The woman rushed to our hero and took her child. She thanked him for saving her daughter. But our hero understood that he heard this voice different from the voice of this girl. Then he heard that voice again and when he woke up, he heard someone calling him, addressing him by the name of Cain. Our hero opened his eyes and saw a beautiful woman in front of him. She was glad that he had finally woken up and all the servants were shouting that Mr. Cain had woken up and it was necessary to quickly contact the owner. Noticing how these people were fussing, our hero did not understand where he was and who these strangers were. After looking around the room a little, he realized that there were a lot of people, furniture, and clothes that he had seen for the first time. He also realized that he had a terrible headache and at the same time a lot of information was coming into his head. There was no information about his native life and he remembered that he was Cain St. Rose, the fourth son of the Viscount St. Rose. Two weeks have passed since then. Apparently our hero was reincarnated in another world, as he guessed. In his head are the memories of the boy Cain up to the age of five. Then Lydia St. Rose, the first lady of the house of St. Rose, entered his room. Interrupting our hero's thoughts, she was worried that something had happened to him. This woman was not really Cain's real mother, but she replaced his mother, Leonor St. Rose, who died of an illness. The girl always looked after Cain very carefully. Sitting down on his bed, she explained to our hero that he had fallen down the stairs and almost died. The young man was not very comfortable with the woman and he tried to assure her that everything was fine. She couldn't believe our hero, and moving closer to him decided to touch his forehead. It seemed to her that he didn't look so bad anymore. The young man was a little uncomfortable. And at that very moment, this awkwardness was interrupted by his rumbling stomach, from which both started laughing and our hero shared that he was just dying of hunger. Of course, Lydia knew about this and therefore brought our hero porridge. Seeing the plate in front of him, the young man noticed that it looked appetizing. Lydia wanted to feed him. Our hero, considering that he was an adult in the old world, felt awkward about this. Turning to Lydia, he wanted her to give him the opportunity to eat himself. Lydia, on the other hand, believed that our hero had not fully recovered yet and therefore asked him not to persist. All that remained for the young man was to agree, seeing how she held out a spoon to his mouth. And after that, when our hero had eaten everything, she praised him for doing a good job today. It was also very unusual for him. While she was watching our hero eat, she noticed that the young man had become somewhat detached since he returned. He used to be more spoiled. Our hero understood that apparently he had to pretend. Therefore, rushing into her arms and addressing Lydia as a mother, he hugged her. At that moment, she felt that the young man was really a spoiled brat. Then a girl knocked on their door and, addressing Lydia, the mother, asked if she could also come in here. 
It was Alice St. Rose, the eldest daughter of the St. Rose family, and Lydia immediately noticed that Alice was supposed to open the door only when she was answered. After all, she told Alice about it all the time, because she always came in without knocking. But for today, Lydia forgave her and invited the girl to come in. Running into the room, she threw herself on the bed to our hero. I wanted to make sure that the young man was alright and that he needed to sleep. Lydia thought it was awkward, remembering how Alice always sat next to Kane's bed. Alice was very confused, and she did not understand why Lydia was saying that, because there was nothing like it seemed to the girl. Lydia noticed that Alice had been worried about Kane for a long time. Alice, approaching our hero, wanted to ask if he was really sure that he was better. Alice touched Kane's forehead to check that the young man definitely did not have a fever. Our hero, feeling the hands on his forehead, thought about how pleasant and cold they were. Speaking of our hero's family, he has three brothers and an older sister, and they are all very beautiful. And now a man appeared in the doorway, who said that if she continued in the same spirit, addressing Alice, then Cain would not be able to calm down. Everyone saw their father, Luke St. Rose, Viscount St. Rose was right in front of them. Entering the room, the man looked at his son and noticed that he looked much better. The father decided that next week Cain would be able to be baptized. Our hero looked at his father and tried to understand what kind of baptism was being discussed, because he had never heard of it. Cain's homeland is small for a nobleman. It is a walled city with a population of about 5,000 people, about half as much as in a barony with an average population of more than 10,000 people. Going back to baptism, in this world, at the age of 5, a child is baptized, and God always gives you one skill. Absolutely any skill can fall out. God checks everyone's abilities. Therefore, the future of a person depends on which skill will fall out. While they were riding in the carriage, our hero was very worried that his life would be decided at the age of 5. Everything was different from his previous life. Watching from the carriage window, our hero thought. Remembering his previous life, he realized that Michio's life had not turned out the best way, as it seemed to him. He lived alone and always worked. Our hero was still thinking about the fact that he came into this world by accident, and tried to look into the future, trying to predict what would happen to him next. It was a bit exciting for him and yet he was here. He really liked it here, he had to enjoy this new life. So as he was reincarnated from another world, he will have an infinite number of items, strong magic and alchemy with all the attributes. He will become a warrior. Our hero was very interested in what he would get, and he was looking forward to it. So they arrived at the church. Upon entering the church, our hero was surprised by this decoration. It looked very beautiful. While the boy was looking around, the shepherd greeted them, asking Lady Lydia and Alice to wait outside. The girls, saying goodbye to our hero, hoped that he would get a good skill and wish Cain good luck. Together with my lord, our hero went to the bishop. The bishop was waiting for them, Mr. Cain and my lord, introducing himself as Bishop Sistine. And the bishop would like to begin the rite of baptism, so he asked our hero to reach out and take his hands, and also close his eyes, because he will pray. Closing his eyes and putting his hands in the bishop's hands, our hero heard a familiar voice again who was very glad that the young man had finally come. At that moment, he found himself in front of a beautiful girl with wings, not understanding where he was. The girl said that this is the so-called world of the gods. She called him here to thank him and introduced herself as the goddess Guardia. Realizing that it was a goddess, our hero guessed that she was one of the gods of this world, the goddess of the earth. The girl noticed that the young man was smart. It was so, and then the young man realized that she was reading his mind. Turning to Cain, she hoped that he remembered his last moments on earth. The young man clutched his aching head, remembered this, because as far as he remembered, he died protecting the girl. The goddess said that she was very grateful to him for what he had done. That girl he saved was related to her. If he hadn't protected her, she would have been in trouble. The young man was only embarrassed that the girl was so close to him. The goddess thanked Cain by taking his hands in hers. The young man felt how soft the goddess's hands were. Pulling his hands out of the goddess's hands, our hero confusedly explained that he was glad that the girl was safe. But if she was somehow connected with the girl, why she herself could not help her, Cain could not understand in any way. And the girl said that of course there is such a possibility, and she did not argue about it. But if she did something, it would lead to the distortion of the earth and this world. Therefore, she thanked the young man for protecting her life. Our hero was very pleased to realize that his life had changed the world for the better. And just knowing that his life was worth living was all he wanted. Then the goddess decided that they needed to get busy and asked to reveal the status of Cain. When he saw the system screen that the young man had been dreaming about for so long, he looked at it joyfully. 
The goddess looked at the screen and saw that the young man already had skills. Our hero had to remember how something changed when his mother Liner died. And the young man remembered. The hand he was holding was glowing then. It was really like that. The young man inherited the recovery magic skill from his mother. Now our hero understood. She was talking about his real mother. Then, in gratitude, the goddess decided that she would like to give him three skills. The young man could press the lever of the roulette wheel that was in front of him. When our hero saw the machine that appeared out of nowhere, similar to the machine from his world, he was scared and thought that maybe it was some kind of gambling game. Our hero now understood how everything really happened, but did not understand why he could not choose for himself. The goddess said that some converts had chosen skills that could upset the balance of the world, so they randomized them. Instead, they increased the number and hoped that she did not upset our hero much with this. Approaching the machine, the young man only thought about how difficult it was to be a goddess, pressing the start button, and prayed that he had the best skills. Our hero has the magic of the earth, an infinite amount of magic and the magic of the magic circle. The goddess saw this and looked at the machine with her mouth open. And our hero, who does not understand, thought about the earth and whether the magic of the earth was strong and there is an infinite amount of magic, will he be able to cope with it if he shows ingenuity? The young man wondered these questions. At that moment, our hero looked at the goddess and heard that she thought his luck was low. Our hero understood that of course it was true and the goddess was so worried about him. That's why I gave you a blessing. She is the goddess of the earth and therefore could compensate for the magic of the earth. At that moment, she touched his forehead and gave him a blessing, the little that was given to him. The girl decided that everything was fine now that she had given him her blessing. He could go to church and pray for her. It would not be often, but she would be watching him and she hoped that the young man would give her news from time to time. Saying goodbye, I wish the young man the best future. Our hero wanted to ask her something, but then he heard the bishop's voice talking about three skills. The bishop said that the young man also has the blessing of the goddess Guardia. Upon hearing this, my father was surprised, and our hero thought that although his skills are a little meager, there is a chance that his stats are on top. After all, he has a blessing, and now it was possible to see what he got by opening the status window. The next moment, there was a status window in front of our hero. He saw that his age was 5 years old and he was level 1. He didn't have a title and his skills were all level 1. Magic power was equal to 18 -0. physical strength is 5, health is 5, endurance is 5, dexterity is also 5, stealth is 5, interest is 60, and luck is 8. After seeing these characteristics, our hero could not believe his eyes, because they were so weak. It seemed to the young man that he could easily die with them. Our hero was scared and wondered what would happen to his life next. Now that our hero thought about it, he and the magic of the earth were made for each other. Our hero could easily help everyone else with his skills. For example, using the creation of clay, he came up with the abacus. Giving them to his parents, he invited them to try them at work. At first, they did not understand if this invention worked, because they had never seen such a thing before. But then, they thought it was amazing. Then the guys burst into the house. At that moment, Cain thought he could use it in agriculture. Interrupting his thoughts, they thanked the master, saying how amazing it was, because Cain was just a wizard. The young man created a field and it brought a huge harvest. It wasn't very large scale, so it was quite in keeping with his nature, Cain thought. The young man was a man who reincarnated in another world and gained three skills. Up to this point, everything was fine. But the reaction of the goddess who gave him these skills was very alarming to him. Our hero thought that everything was so bad, he got very simple skills, and the path in front of him would be very difficult, as he already realized later. It was then, leaving the church, that the father thought that something had happened to Cain after he had received the skills. The young man, following his father, tried to assure him that everything was in order. When they went to Lydia, they saw how worried she was. She hoped that his abilities and skills were up to par. Alice also wondered how many skills Cain had. My father told me that he had two magics, the magic of the earth and the magic of the magic circle, and the young man inherited the magic of restoration from Liner. Our hero realized that infinite magic was hidden and his father could not see it. Alice rushed to him and praised Cain, because he had three skills and she was very happy. She knew that Cain also got his skills from his mother and our hero realized that apparently she also has such magic. Meanwhile, the parents communicated with each other and Lydia knew what the magic of the earth was, but she had never heard what the magic of the magic circle was, like the young man's father. My father decided that he would write a letter to Benjamin and ask him to look for information. But earth magic was too useless. Of course, there was no need to worry about it now. Lydia tried to calm her father. You can always go back to the mansion and see what's there. 
the father explained to Kane, his son, that even family members are not allowed to watch the status board, and our hero had to remember this. Even trying to look at them was bad form and the young man understood. Alice was looking at her parents in great surprise at that moment, and it turned out that it was a secret even from trusted family members. The young man remembered his world where he played games, and from there he knew that everyone usually shows their status to friends and colleagues by cooperating with them. The young man would have shown his status to his comrades, but apparently this world had its own rules. Our hero will think and decide for himself when he will have friends and he will also be able to decide how to use this skill, then it will be fun again. He decided that when they returned to the mansion, he would test his skills as quickly as possible, and Kane wished that his new life would start faster. Our hero was trying to figure out the magic of the magic circle. He was asked to disassemble a level 1 skill into a magic circle, and write it down on scrolls of magic stones and other materials. To analyze magic in a magic circle, a separate skill is required. To write disassembled magic into a scroll or magic stone requires 10 times the amount of magic consumed by disassembled magic. To use a written spell, it takes 3 times more magic power than the analyzed spell. The amount of written magic used can be increased by consuming magic power while writing a spell x the number of times magic is used. Level 1. Creating Magic Ink. Creating a Magic Circle. Transferring a Magic Circle. After reading all this, Kane thought about how many letters there were on the screen and he did not understand where to get the necessary skill, which was mentioned earlier. The young man realized that he could not do anything with it at level 1 and it would not be useful for some time. Talking about this skill, our hero realized. Next was the magic of the earth, the necessary conditions for it. This is the skill of magic manipulation. It is possible to use earth magic. When using earth magic, using the surrounding soil or sand costs 10% of magic power. Level 1. Stone bullet stone gravel x level x 5 to hit the target, the power of magic, 10. Stone creating a block of stone with a size of 100 mm x 100 mm x 100 mm. Magic, 10. Hole create a hole in the ground with a diameter of 1000 mm and a depth of 100 mm. Magic, 10. In a sense, our hero, after reading all this, thought that it was a very formulaic magic. Clearly not what he wanted. CMU was also wondering if he could make a golem or something like that if he raised his level enough. Then there was restorative magic. Necessary conditions for use, a skill is required. Condition of use can activate magic within a radius of level X 1 meter. Level 1. Healing heals wounds of one target. HP plus 15 blood loss cannot be healed. Magic, 10 can eliminate lower level poison, magic, 10. Level 1 can use healing and elimination of poison, a skill that Kane got from Mother Linner. He had to be sure to use it carefully. After reading all this, the young man thought, and the last thing he should have read about was the endless amount of magical power, an infinite amount of magical power, passive abilities. He could always receive magic power from the outside, unless he has acquired a skill in infinitely absorbs and overflows magical power, and after trying it, it looked amazing for our hero, not understanding what kind of skill it was, maybe it was overflow. Otherwise, Kane understood what kind of skills they were, which he could not be happy about. And he also saw that something was written further on his system, and it was a script from the goddess Guardia for Kane, who had not yet learned the magic of manipulation. She turned off an endless amount of magic until he learned how to manipulate her well. The young man had to quickly learn the skill of magical manipulation. Our hero, being a little upset, did not understand what it was, because he thought that the goddess Guardia had at least some kind of power. All he needed now was a blessing. Clicking on it, our hero saw that it was a pretty good blessing from the goddess Guardia. Minor earth magic and restoration magic gives a plus 20% increase. The consumption of earth magic and recovery is minus 10%. The abnormal resistance was low. Our hero also had a function, comprehension of foreign languages, which was considered additional. Our hero also became interested in what kind of achievement foreign languages are. It is possible that he could read them. Thoughtfully looking at the screen, our hero decided to try to click on the skill. And he also thanked for the addition, addressing Mrs. Guardia. Our hero was still not happy when he thought that he could use magic. I wondered what he would do with this magic next. Then someone knocked on his door. Our hero invited them to come in. At that moment, he saw Randolph, the butler, and Alice behind him. The butler informed him that the owner wanted to see him in the living room. 
our hero was going to go there right away because he wanted to know more, not understanding what his father wanted from him. Cain was so lost in thought that he didn't even notice Alice calling him, and so he had to apologize to the girl. Alice knew that our hero was busy with his skills anyway and it dawned on him when he locked himself in his room as soon as they arrived at the villa. At that moment, she was standing next to our hero and showed signs of attention to him. And then Randolph said that in fact, Miss Alice also did something similar on the day she received her skills. When Alice heard what the butler had said about her, she was embarrassed and unhappy. The girl tried to prove that she just wanted to finish reading the book to the end. She also tried to justify that she was late for dinner because she was engrossed in a book. Our hero was surprised that Alice was also busy with her skills. Alice, at that moment, not paying attention to him, and the fact that he guessed everything, scolded the butler. Randolph was calmly apologizing to her, because it looks like he misunderstood her. Our hero, watching this scene, thought about how Alice was an adult. The girl, having stopped being shy, explained that they also got their skills from Linner's mom and had to take care of them. Of course, the young man agreed with her and laughed a little. But of course Alice didn't understand why he was laughing. Meanwhile, Kane was thinking about the fact that Alice was just a child. The next moment, he went into the office, where his father and Lydia were waiting for him. And feeling the tense atmosphere, he did not understand what all this meant. Sitting down on the sofa, our hero decided to listen to his father. And my father told me about the skills that were given to him today. He knew it was difficult, but he asked the young man not to get depressed. Our hero was surprised that his father talked about it like that. Lydia, who heard what her husband said, asked him to apologize, because that's not how he put it. The father did this, addressing our hero. The young man did not understand why he had to become depressed, turning his question to his father. The father said that he should have known that in an aristocratic society, including in their society, the skills they received at baptism determine almost his entire future. Our hero knew this, and then the father continued his story, because those who have combat skills enter the knightly academy, or join the knightly orders of their kingdom, family. Those who possess combat magic enter the academy of magicians, become royal magicians, and those with political skills usually enter the royal academy. They become civil servants of the kingdom or some kind. Our hero was looking at his father attentively at that moment, and the same one explained that he had just tested the magic of the young man of the earth. She has no attack skills, even if his level rises. The details of the magic and the magic circle were unknown. In other words, he meant that he certainly didn't want to say it but he didn't know if Cain would have a decent future. At that moment, Lydia covered her mouth with tears in her eyes at this phrase that her father uttered. Our hero, of course, did not expect to hear this. They probably really thought his future was bleak after noticing their parents' faces, he thought. The young man understood that although he complained about it at first, he meant that it was certainly complicated magic. He thought that his skills just needed to be worked out and there was no need to be so sad about it. At that moment, Lydia got up from her seat, hugged our hero tightly and asked him not to worry, because they would not give up on him. She spoke with tears in her eyes, and at that moment everyone made sad faces, and the father covered his face with his hands in grief. Our hero saw how worried they were about him. After all, it wasn't like that in his previous life. He didn't want to upset these people. Therefore, having firmly decided to act, our hero turned to his father with a request. If it seemed like he needed a magic manipulation skill to use earth magic, so he would like to learn magic manipulation skills. If the father knows how to learn this, then he asked him to tell him about it or he could get permission to visit the library to see for himself. Seeing how our hero was responsible and ready to learn, the parents were surprised. The guy tried to assure them that he would be fine. Even the magic of the earth can do a lot if we master it competently. If that doesn't work, he can use earth magic to cultivate the field. And if he learns the restoration magic that his mother gave him, he will be able to heal people in his domain, and everything will be fine. He asked me not to worry about him. Hearing the young man talking about it enthusiastically, the parents were also delighted. After all, he was right, perhaps there is potential in earth magic too. They, as parents, should not have given up, so they offered him to work together, hugging their son. Lydia supported him and so did his father. His father also thought that Benjamin knew how to get the skill of manipulating magic, and he decided that he would write a letter to his son so that he would come for this vacation. The father will ask for help with this. Our hero was very glad that his father took this information in such a way that he could help him. Kane knew that he said it with great enthusiasm, but fighting is not the only thing you can do in another world. And these lovely people who were around him cared so much about him that he had to do everything possible to keep them from being sad. Kane was only five years old and by the standards of this world, 
he has 50 more years ahead of him, so he can have some fun. After looking out the window, our hero decided to think about the fact that the brother Benjamin, about whom his father spoke, he is probably studying at the Academy of Magicians now. And after that, he found out that using magic was not so easy, that is, the magic of the earth was very heavy. First he had to become a master of magic, focus properly, otherwise he wouldn't kill a single goblin. It's all because of the magic test results. The man who discovered the possibilities of earth magic, who used it simply with incredible skills, was Benjamin St. Rose. It's been six months since the day our hero decided to work hard on his skills. He worked hard, so even the maids couldn't keep track of them. After all, the young man was not going to sit still, because today is the day he has been waiting for for a very long time. Brother Benjamin was supposed to come home today. His father asked Cain to listen once, until he learned the magic of manipulation. He was forbidden to use magic. If he uses magic without learning it, he may lose his skills. His father believed that only Benjamin could help him with this, so he was really looking forward to his return. But no one thought that the young man would return so quickly. A fine young man, Benjamin St. Rose, got out of the carriage. The son of the St. Rose family, who was welcomed by everyone. Kane and Mrs. Alice ran up to their brother and greeted him. Our hero was smiling at him. Benjamin, bending down to his little brother and sister, saw how much Kane had grown, and so had Alice. Behind him stood the butler, who also greeted young master Benjamin. Benjamin was surprised, because he was at home, and the butler still called him young. But he explained that this was indeed the case, because it is customary to call everyone that way until they become adults. Master Luke and Miss Lydia were waiting for him in the living room. The butler informed Benjamin. Alice and Kane too, so I saw all the guys off, and they started drinking tea. Brother Ben, as it seemed to our hero, seemed to be a very smart guy. He became an orderly at the age of 14, the first in the history of the Institute of Magical Arts and Crafts. The parents were, of course, very happy to see Benjamin and an interesting conversation ensued. They were very interested to hear about his affairs at school and how everything was going. Our hero, watching his brother, realized that he was only 14, but he held himself very solidly. More solidly than Cain at the age of 35, recalling his past life. Also, the father actually had a request for his son. He wanted him to study so that Cain could master the manipulation of magic during his stay. And my father told me that Cain owns the magic of the earth and the magic of restoration. He needs to manipulate magic. Cain himself wants to use magic as soon as possible. While waiting for Benjamin, our hero ran and trained all these days. Ben, of course, accepted his father's request and carefully looked at our hero, as it seemed to Cain himself, with such a look that the young man did not understand what it meant. The next morning, they met with Cain. Benjamin wanted to ask Cain to tell him a few things before they started, and he was interested in the skills that were given to the young man, talking about magic and the magic circle, earth magic and restoration magic. Of course, our hero did not mention that there is still an infinite amount of magic, but this will only complicate the situation if he tells his brother how it seemed to our hero. It would be better if he didn't tell him everything now, remembering how Guardia wanted to leave this magic deactivated. So the young man decided to admit that he only had three. Benjamin explained that it was usually forbidden to ask about statuses, but since it was important, he would like the young man to be honest with him this time. Then he asked how much magic he had. Our hero hoped that it would probably be okay if he told him and told him that he had a magical power equal to the value of 18 -0. Benjamin, hearing this, couldn't believe his ears. 18 is about 10 times the expected result. This is about 6 times more than Ben's own. Ben's value was 320 m, and he decided that it was necessary to change the way of training. Kane watched his brother, and he explained that he would use the bracelet that he put on his arm during training. From now on, the young man will wear it all the time until he learns how to manipulate magic. The next moment, the bracelet began to act and our hero felt as if something was tingling and something was being absorbed into him. Our hero was very scared, and his brother asked Kane not to take it off. This magic suction cup that he designed, it is usually a device that prevents criminal magicians from using magic. It drains all the magical power of the owner. This special version can be configured to preserve the magic of the owner. It drains the magic power of the owner until it reaches the value of 10. At that moment, the stone began to glow. So it turned out that the young man had 10 magical powers. Now Benjamin was really convinced that the young man had 1790, the value of his magical power, suggesting that he start practicing. 
they will start with the method of mastering the manipulation of magic, which consists of several stages of concentration, circulation of release and maintenance. The young man had to concentrate his magic power in the area below the navel. Our hero tried to do this, he just needed to gather the magic power together where he held his hands, namely near the navel. Using concentration, our hero felt how it worked and warmth began to feel in his stomach. Benjamin was surprised that the young man was able to do it the first time. Watching his brother, he hoped that something had changed in him, but our hero did not understand what Ben was talking about. The next moment, the young man screamed and Benjamin became worried that something had happened to his brother. Kane explained that he felt warmth under both hands, but it disappeared. Ben suggested that he make sure that he would keep this warm until he lost consciousness. And then our hero literally spent several days in training. Four days later, he finally felt like he was able to do what Benjamin had told him earlier. Finally, the heat did not dissipate when he does the concentration. His brother praised him for his excellent work. Kane, however, fell exhausted the next moment, so tired, because it was very hard, especially after 30 repetitions in a row. Benjamin pretended not to notice how tired our hero was and suggested that he move on. Our hero was surprised that brother Ben wanted to move on already, because he felt a little constrained. Then Ben suggested that he leave the training for today, because he didn't mind, but he couldn't use magic until he learned how to control it. Without his help, he won't be able to use magic for at least a year. Our hero was surprised, but then there was nothing left and brother Ben said goodbye to him. Kane believed that Ben was a real demon. The next day, they started training again. After a while, the young man needed to concentrate. He was able to do it easily because now he could do it more smoothly. Although he was able enough, he would still have time to prove himself, as our hero believed. Ben, meanwhile, asked to try to move the collected magical power to his chest. Imagine how it slowly rises to his chest. Following his instructions, our hero began to do this, but realized that the force was not moving at all. So 10 minutes passed. Having collapsed, our hero realized that his magic was not moving at all. Benjamin realized that it probably wasn't that easy to start. Ben offered to help, so he stood behind our hero and asked him to try to concentrate again, helping him with his own hands. The magic power was forming into a ball and now Benjamin explained that it would hurt a little, so our hero had to endure. As his brother had said, it really hurt when they concentrated energy above his stomach together. The brother explained that even though it was painful, the process of widening narrow magical paths so that magic could easily pass through them. Naturally, he was in pain. Our hero collapsed and Benjamin explained that they had given their best today. This was circulation, and he could achieve mastery if he moved it from the lower abdomen to the chest, from the head to the chest, from the left arm to the right, from the right leg to the left, from the left leg to the lower abdomen. Watching his brother, our hero thought with tears in his eyes that he was still a demon. It's been five days since the case of severe pain. Benjamin thought about the fact that lately Kane has been casting wary glances at him from time to time. Apparently he was too strict with him last time. But there was no time to waste. And just at that moment, when he was thinking about it, Kane was already running to him, saying that everything was ready, he had already finished everything. Ben was surprised that the young man was able to complete the circulation so quickly. But Kane invited him to look at it for himself and was able to show him how he wielded his magic. When the magic power that has been moved moves back to the lower abdomen, it seems a little thicker. Our hero was surprised to ask if he could make his ways wider by circulating magic inside himself. Laughing, Benjamin thought it was very cool to address Kane. The young man was only thinking that overtime, which had become a habit in the days when he was a slave to the company, had caught up with him here. Kane finished training even when Ben's brother wasn't around and he was very glad that everything worked out. Now our hero was waiting for the next lesson of liberation. Now he had to put his palms together in front of his chest to make a circle, then make a circulation between the rings. The palms must be perfectly flat to make it work. When our hero tried to do this, something prevented him. And turning to brother Ben, the young man explained that he had hit something with his right hand and was unable to transfer magic. Ben then offered Kane two options. The first option, Ben can help him as it was with the circulation. The second is to reduce the magic a bit and try again. The third option is to increase the magic and try from scratch, offering him to choose one of the options. When Benjamin made such a face, our hero found out that he looked like a demon. Kane understood that all these several methods were definitely going to hurt him. But our hero decided that it was not the time to be a coward and chose the first option. When Benjamin heard that he wanted to choose the first option, he was surprised, and again decided to help him, suggesting that he then start the cycle again. 
then walked up to Cain and pointed his hands at him. Benjamin supported him behind, and our hero felt the magic of Ben's brother pouring into him. The form of magic became thinner and sharper. The next moment, joining his hands, our hero felt the magic penetrate through them, but it was very painful for him. She does not come off at all, as if she is being influenced from the outside. Looking at her hands, the young man thought. Benjamin explained that the magic power had entered his left hand and that he was doing well, he would continue to circulate it like that. Our hero was able to do this, but fell down from the pain and sat on the floor in front of his brother again. Ben offered to release the magical power of his body. This is called liberation. Seeing Benjamin calmly talking about it, our hero looked at him with tears in his eyes. Benjamin pretended that he did not notice this, suggesting now to try to circulate, slightly withdrawing his hand and making a circle. When the magic passes, it will become easier. Two days later, our hero trained the way his brother told him. And he did it, even when he took his hands away, showing how magical energy had accumulated around his hands. It was all thanks to Ben's harsh lessons. Cain was able to master the liberation of magic, watching Benjamin, who looked like a demon again. The next lesson was four. It was maintenance. Maintaining it was dangerous, so they would train outside the walls of the house. Benjamin explained to him that the young man should never have lost his concentration in the middle of exercises. If he did lose concentration, he had to raise his arms diagonally up in front of him. After hearing this instruction, our hero did not understand why he had to do this, but kept these questions to himself. Benjamin asked us to try to start with circulation first, collect enough magic, and then move on to liberation, which is what our hero did. Then hold the magic between your palms and twist the sphere. After trying to do this, the young man felt the magic flowing out of his body while continuing to be released. The next moment, when there was quite a lot of energy, the young man thought that it was not good. Then there was an explosion and Cain immediately received a blow from Benjamin that he was angry at his brother. After all, Ben had told him to raise his arms diagonally forward when he lost concentration. Now our hero understood what it was for, but I saw what he had done, looking at the hole that had formed in the ground from his explosion. The young man almost hurt himself when he did not follow the instructions. Ben was very angry with him. Benjamin was explaining to Cain, and he also added that magic was not a toy. He had to be responsible when he used it. The young man was very upset when he heard about it. Cain understood that he was sure that he had made a mistake somewhere, but getting into another world and not mastering magic was the worst thing. But the truth was, it was much more dangerous if he made a mistake. Therefore, turning to Brother Ben, he asked him to teach him again. This time, Cain promised that he would keep his word and no more excuses, he would not cry anymore, and therefore asked him to finish his training. Ben, seeing how the young man decided to try, agreed, offering to start him from the beginning. Four days later, magic manipulation skill added. The magic manipulation skill was included in Kane's stats. Our hero was very glad that he had succeeded. Ben congratulated him too, because he did a good job. It's unusual to get additional skills so quickly, of course the young man thanked him. Ben decided to show him that if he could get through this training, he would be able to attack without a spell, showing how easily he used magic himself. At that moment, the young man made a huge hole next to the one that our hero had made earlier. Seeing this, Cain was very surprised, thinking that the young man might have been from the world of Dragon Ball. Cain decided never to contradict his brother again. Two days after the new year, Benjamin left and our hero said goodbye to him, as did the whole family. The training was very hard, but when he first learned how to control magic, Thanks to his brother, our hero experienced a real sense of achievement. From that moment on, he decided that he would use magic to its limits. And then the young man felt the bracelet on his arm begin to vibrate. Cain knew that if he didn't take it off, he would soon run out of magic. The young man was going to use the method his brother had taught him by removing the bracelet. Left alone, the young man used concentration first, then circulation and maintenance, just as Ben had taught him. After that, he used personal protection, namely the stone hairpin. The young man saw that he finally managed to use magic. He was very happy for himself, as it should be in another world, and he wondered what else he could use besides stones and holes, because he knew that he could create stones. But it was necessary to see what happened to the holes. Concentrating, the young man used the hole and a second later a hole appeared in the ground. But as it seemed to our hero, she was very small, after which he also ran out of magic power. Today, he only used 20 magic powers, because everything else came out in a magic suction and it seemed to him that it was somehow not enough. Our hero raised his level by training with Benjamin, and checked it on his board, which showed his stats. The young man has reached a new level. He was so tired that he decided to go home, and then fell asleep. 
When the young man woke up, he saw that it was already evening outside, and his body was just filled with energy. Kane felt more magic than usual, so he decided to check the status window. After looking at the status window, our hero removed the magic suction cup, so he fully recovered. His energy was equal to 21 -0. Until now, he had won one hundredth of the magic power. He just wasn't used to this feeling and it was nice to see the number 2100. Therefore, our hero decided that he would start practicing right now and running away from his room. Lydia found him here. She would like to ask the young man where he was going when she saw him running out of his room. It was almost lunchtime. As she knew, the young man was not at lunch. After seeing the stern Lydia, our hero realized that if he had told her that he was practicing magic instead of studying, she would probably have been very angry. Therefore, the young man decided to lie and said that he had studied the letter with his sister Alice in general, and was a little tired, so he decided that they would go for a walk. Lydia, hearing what he was saying, agreed. She knew that he needed a rest and apologized for doubting him. Our hero, leaving Lydia, who was so happy for him, felt guilty because he had deceived her. Inwardly, the young man apologized to his mother. Returning to the backyard where he had previously trained, the young man again found a hole that still remained. It seemed to him that she would disappear after a while. Then he realized that it must have been the magic of constant action. If he wasn't careful, someone would fall and get hurt, so the young man decided that he had to get rid of this hole in the ground. It was just necessary to try, and our hero, using his magic, was able to patch this hole in the ground. Descending to the place where she had recently been, our hero was very surprised and pleased at the same time. After all, the hole was gone. That's how it was possible to erase the events caused by magic. Kane had the feeling that it takes two times more magic power to remove than was used to create it. To remove it, he will need two times more magic than he used to create it. Only wizards with a lot of magic can do this. Our hero decided that now it was necessary to explore this moment. He created many new holes, and then decided to use the removal of those same holes. Watching how he did it, it seemed to our hero that maybe the magic of the earth was not so bad. He was very pleased with himself and went home to rest. The next day, jumping out of his bed, our hero was so inspired. He decided that he would practice magic again, running out of his room. Alice noticed him. The girl was jealous of Kane. He was lucky to go out every day, and she had school today. Lydia, who was standing behind her, saw how sad the girl was behaving. Alice didn't want to do math anymore. Alice was very sad that Kane was having fun while she was doing such a boring job. Lydia only wished her luck with Kane today. Alice didn't understand why Lydia was talking about Kane, because she was studying alone. It seemed to Lydia that she was studying with him. At that moment, Alice said that Kane was always on the street. The girls realized that something was wrong here, since their stories did not match. Meanwhile, our hero decided to try the stone. Standing on the street where he usually practiced, he used the magic of the stone. After that, he saw that he had really succeeded, and the stone was standing right in front of him. The young man was very happy about this. Looking at the stone, our hero thought that he would have an ordinary stone, but it is in the form of a block. It was a success, as our hero believed, because the stone was about 10 centimeters high and wide, and this was exactly what he wanted to achieve. He's going to do earth magic again today. Using magic, our hero created many stones that turned into a pyramid and now he felt like some kind of builder, and it was time for him to take stock of today. The magic of the land of Cain, the verification process, the unification results based on the assumption that circulation is used. A hole when casting a spell without much thought. A hole the size of a hatch in 10 centimeters deep is formed. If you imagine the depth, then the hole is formed at an imaginary depth, and the size becomes smaller. There is a correspondence of the same volume. If you imagine the bottom, the hole after it has been created, then it will become deeper. If you repeat the cycle several times, then the volume that can be created will be two times more. If the circulation is increased three times, the volume that can be created will increase three times. The walls of the hole will collapse if they are hit hard with a stone or something else. And if our hero uses his boundless magical power, he will be able to easily build a basement and dig a well. Two, it will not be difficult for him. The stone and the length of one side can be changed according to the image but the volume does not change. Our hero tried to imagine a shape other than a square, but nothing but a square did not work. Using a cycle, the length of one side became 15 centimeters. When the cycle was rotated twice, the length of one side became 19 centimeters. And with a triple turn of the cycle, the length of one side became equal to 21 centimeters. By casting a spell with a clear representation of the number or by turning on the spell of the word two or three, you can increase the length of the side. 
Casting a spell while directing magic into the soil reduces the consumption of magical power, and converting soil to stone consumes less magic than converting magic to stone. Since it is possible to produce stones of the same size, could it have been possible to produce more construction stones? Walls and roads, our hero wondered. Thinking that earth magic was very useful and checking his stats, he was very happy because he decided to continue training in the same spirit. Then Lydia and Alice saw him. They finally found our hero, realized that he was going to study, as Lydia said, because Alice told her about it. Alice thought it was wrong and unfair that only Kane was playing outside, and Alice was studying all the time. Lydia dragged Kane along with them. Our hero understood that his training was over, but what he meant was that he studied magic himself and therefore couldn't practice. But Lydia did not listen to him and brought our hero to the teacher with Alice, now he also began to study. Sitting in front of the papers that the teacher gave him, our hero realized that he could easily read and understand the contents. But he was forced to practice meaningless spelling, and now he is a 35-year-old man doing exercises for a 6-year-old child. It's been like this for six months since Benjamin left. As a result of his constant training, the level of earth magic rose to the second. In addition, when our hero learned magic manipulation, the infinite amount of magic power skill changed to active. Kane also learned the skill of avoiding learning. For scientific purposes, he went outside to observe the plants. Earth magic is level 2, magic manipulation is also level 2. When our hero learned these skills, it was necessary to see what else was available to him. And Kane has three more abilities. An earthen rampart, a field on the ground and the creation of clay. Using an earthen rampart, he can make a target for a stone bullet. The other two are also very useful, but many people will call earth magic unsuccessful. It didn't seem like a problem for our hero. It was necessary to practice again today, and the young man went outside and used the magic of the wall. Then a stone bullet that bounced off this very wall. Our hero was surprised that using a stone bullet it was not possible to break this wall. He needed to check how many shots it would take to break this wall. So our hero used a stone bullet many times and after 10 shots at this wall, he still managed to break through it. The wall turned out to be quite strong, as our hero noticed. Then one of the people from their estate noticed him, seeing that Master Kane was practicing magic. It seemed to him that he was doing great. In front of Kane was Hardy, the gardener and coachman of the House of St. Rose. A large man in his 30 seconds with a scar above his left eye and missing one arm. Hardy lost his arm during a battle with demons, after which he was hired by the St. Rose family. Even with one hand, he can drive a cart, take care of the garden and flower beds. And although he looks a little intimidating, he has a very gentle personality. When he saw that Hardy noticed how he was training, our hero thought that he probably wanted something from him. Hardy just thought it was time to plant Satsuma sweet potatoes for the winter. I was going to make a field for them, pointing to my rake. Our hero adored Satsuma because they were very tasty, especially when they are baked. The fruits were very sweet. Satsumu is the equivalent of sweet potatoes, a precious sweetness in this world. After hearing what our hero liked, Hardy gladly went to plow the fields. The young man wished him luck, looking at the pile of stones, which he now had to remove. Using the deletion, he calmly did it, everything was clean and tidy. Then, looking behind him, he saw Hardy diligently digging into the hard ground. There were a lot of weeds and loose stones. Kane thought about how much work he had to do. And at that very moment, the system showed that the young man had level 2, an earthen rampart, digging the earth and creating clay. So he decided he could help Hardy. Hardy, hearing that the young man wanted to help him, was very surprised, because this was not a job for a young gentleman. But the confident Kane said that he wanted to try something. Hardy realized that the young man wanted to use earth magic, but did not understand what it meant. Kane said that he needed to know what size Hardy wanted his new Satsumu field. Hardy thoughtfully showed him how roughly the field should have looked by outlining it. The size of a badminton court, as Kane saw in front of him. The young man decided that now he would be able to strain himself using his magic, and then digging the ground. The young man cleared the whole land. Hardy thought our hero's magic was amazing. The soil was very hard and it was impossible to grow anything in it, but in an instant it became soft and pliable. Kane knew that digging the earth would be perfect for fields, it plowed the soil and made it soft and fluffy. The young man was very proud of himself, even if now on a small scale, when the level rises, it will be possible to carve up entire hectares. Kane decided that he would try even harder then. Hardy was very glad that the young man was ready to help him, and so using their digging of the earth, they plowed the field. Seeing how the young man was ready to help him and did everything for this field, Hardy thanked him, because his 10-day work was already over. Hardy was very grateful to the young man, 
because it used to take him a lot of time to plow with one hand, and thanks to his earth magic, he can start doing other work in the remaining time. Kane was even a little embarrassed that he was thanked so much, but there was nothing left and he accepted this gratitude with a smile. For now, Guardy decided to bring potatoes so that the young man could help him with this. Our hero thought about how hard it was to farm in this world. Kane hoped that his earth magic would make farming a little easier. Just at that moment, Hardy brought the potatoes, addressing Mr. Kane. Taking the fruits, he began to plant them and when he saw it, he didn't understand if he was really planting potatoes like that. Hardy did not understand that they probably should have been planted in some other way. Our hero thought that they should be planted as seedlings, to which Guardi explained that they do not do this, because Satsumu is planted like potatoes. The knowledge and technology of growing crops are completely different from what they were in his old world, as Kane now realized. A technology teacher in high school told him that if Satsuma was not planted with seedlings, then the harvest would not be very good. Kane offered Guardi to share the seed potatoes with him. He wanted to build a field for Satsuma and grow it too. Hardy offered our hero to sit next to him, and he would take care of the rest. Kane looked at the seedlings and now thought about what to do with them. He looked around and didn't find anything suitable, so when he called up the system window, he was wondering if it was possible to do something with magic. Our hero found something that might have worked. Using his magic, the young man decided that he had to try and it remained to think it over in his head, creating the clay that he used, after which he finally succeeded and created something like a pot for seedlings. The young man tried so hard that he thought he could use it for almost anything. Next time, he needed to make some more dishes. The young man planted the sprouts in this pot, sprinkling them with earth. A few days later, they sprouted. Potatoes from seeds have finally begun to germinate. It was amazing for Hardy, the seed potatoes had sprouted, and there were such scant shoots in his fields, as it seemed to him. It was always like this, Kane saw that Hardy was really right, there were very few sprouts in his field. Our hero recalled, because he was also told that if you plant sweet potatoes from seeds, the probability of growth is low, and the yield will not increase, remembering his teacher. Interrupting Kane's thoughts, Hardy asked the gentleman if he could plant the seedlings that the young man had grown. Kane would have been glad if Hardy had planted them and Kane was also going to make some bets. Realizing that Hardy had not heard this word before, our hero forgot that the knowledge and skills of growing crops here are completely different than in the previous world. The young man had to explain that it was a little difficult, so it was better to show it in practice. First, he needed to plow the field again. The young man used to dig the ground. Then it remains to make a good trench using the hole. Kane finally did it and he got the beds. After seeing this, both he and Hardy were very happy about what happened. Showing the plowed land, our hero explained that this is called a garden bed. It helps drainage and catches the sun better, so the soil warms up and the crop grows better, he explained to Guardy. Kane thought to himself that this was what his high school teacher had said. The young man mentally thanked him for this. Hardy, on the other hand, was surprised at how much Mr. Kane knew, and for him it was surprising because he did not know that there was such a way. Hardy was very interested in how the young man had such detailed knowledge. The young man explained that he had been taught the skill of earth magic. Hearing about this, Hardy thought about what wonderful magic it was. The skill of earth magic was so multifaceted. Our hero was silently apologizing to Hardy for the blatant lie he had just presented to him. While he was studying with Alice, he thought to himself that at last this magic of the earth was beginning to be useful. He used it for a lot of different things. Interrupting his thoughts, the teacher suggested solving the arithmetic problem again. The teacher also said that Alice, who studied with our hero, does not solve two-digit arithmetic problems very well, and she decided to explain to her in more detail once again how exactly this is done. Our hero, getting up from his seat, explained that he could easily perform addition and subtraction with one number. Looking at Alice, the young man thought about how difficult it was for her to solve two-digit arithmetic problems. Kane knew that she was good at solving single-digit problems, and so she would soon master double-digit ones if she tried very hard. Even though he was 35 years old, he only wrote letters. Then it dawned on our hero and he thought about the abacus, wondering if he had ever been in this world. It would be very useful to have it on hand. It could be used even in this world without electricity. The young man decided that after lessons he would definitely do it. At that moment, he was so happy that he decided to do the tasks faster and have time to do it in the backyard of the house. When he got there, he decided to think about the uniform. He was pretty familiar with it. You can't specify this in your resume, as our hero understood. 
but thanks to the knowledge, the young man could now get a good abacus. The clay must be pliable, as it seemed to him, in order to make it. Using addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, he decided that he would make his own abacus using clay magic. A second later, a device appeared in front of him. The young man was very happy, and also this object makes a shuffling sound and works. Then it was necessary to apply it immediately. But the next moment, when the young man tried to use it, this item broke. Sitting over the split object, the young man was very upset, thinking that he probably had a bad idea of the image, and decided that he would remake the abacus, imagining it made of iron. The next moment, the young man created it in the form of a stone, but it turned out to be not strong enough. Using clay creation, this time it looked like the item was very sturdy, and shouldn't have broken so quickly. Using this object, our hero thought that it was as if he was playing an iron violin. It's fun to play with skills, but if he's a beginner, it was difficult, so it will take a little trial and error. And yet our hero was very glad that he finally made it. He enjoyed his work a lot. At this moment, holding one abacus in his hand, several more lay in front of the young man. Abacus number 8 is a little bigger than they had on Earth. It's a little difficult to play with balls but the sound didn't bother him too much. The main thing is that this item will not break, which our hero was very happy about. He hoped it would help his sister count in math. Since the young man created several, he decided that he would take number 8, number 2, and also number 5, because Abacus number 5 was two times smaller than number 1 and number 2. Of course, it was not easy to use them, but perhaps this item will help and later you will need to think about how he made it all up. Maybe they have something similar in this world. The only thing our hero regretted was that Brother Benjamin was not here. He decided to ask Mother Lydia about such things. Moving through the mansion, our hero saw a frustrated father who was sitting in front of papers. The man talked about the family debt that they had and that he did not know what to do to repay it. But when our hero heard about it, he was very surprised that their family had a debt. Then one of the maids caught him, not understanding what he was doing in front of his father's office. In order not to disturb my father and not let him know that he had heard about the problem, our hero quickly replied to the maid that he was looking for Mother Lydia. The maid told him that if he was looking for Mistress Lydia, she was in the library. Our hero realized that he had just been almost spotted and ran to the library. Standing in the hallway, our hero wondered if it was true about the debt. If this is true, then he was afraid that this family would break up. Kane had only been with them for six years and he couldn't let that happen. He didn't want to see them sad, but he didn't know what to do. Kane thought about the fact that he only has the magic of the earth and knowledge from his past life to make their land bigger and richer. If he uses this knowledge, he will be able to help the family. Territorial reform awaited them. Our hero accidentally found out about the financial difficulties of the House of St. Rose and decided to reform the estate in order to help in any way he can but our hero did not understand where to start. If he doesn't do something, it may soon be too late. He was tormented by the question of what he could do right now and for now. He decided that he needed to ask his mother about these bills that were in his hands. He finally saw the library doors. He was still too young to get permission to enter. The young man had heard that his ancestors collected books, so there was a more extensive library than most barons. When he entered the library, he was looking for Lady Lydia. The girl asked him to come in, explaining that she was a little busy. At that moment, the girl was sitting at her books. The young man could smell old leather and paper. He had no idea that there were so many books in their library. Lady Lydia thought that this was probably a novelty for our hero. Next time she would ask Luke to give Kane permission, because now that he had learned to read, Kane would probably want to take something here. Looking at Lydia, he saw that she was wearing glasses and thought about how the atmosphere had changed. Probably it was all because she was wearing glasses. The young man decided not to waste time and, turning to Lady Lydia, wanted her to look at something. But then his attention was attracted by a book that was glowing, and he asked Lydia about it without thinking at all. The girl looked at the shelf and our hero pointed to a shiny book on the right on the top shelf. She realized that he was talking about a book that she was already holding in her hands, but it seemed to her that it was not glowing and she gave it to our hero. This book turned out to be about how to grow rice, make miso, soy sauce, mayonnaise, ketchup, sauces and other seasonings. It tells about the reconstruction of electrical appliances with the help of magic. This book was called The Hero's Book. Upon hearing that our hero could read what was written on the book, Lady Lydia was very surprised. Our hero understood that he had read the name on the machine looked closely and saw that everything was in Japanese. At that moment, Lydia jumped up from her seat and asked the maid to call Luke and Randolph. Kane found out about it later. This book was written by a brave hero, 12 generations before Kane. 
It was inherited in their family and it seems that at some point his ancestors became unable to read the works of the great hero. The young man understood that in fact these were letters in his native language from a previous life, but this simply could not be. He could not say such a thing in any way. It was a very difficult situation, as it seemed to our hero. He thought about what excuses he could tell his parents, but thanks to the book, he got access to the archives. Randolph taught him how to use them. This brave man who was a hero was just as much a reincarnation as he was. After reading this book, Kane realized. This man was a Japanese who had been summoned to another world to exterminate demons. As a result, he managed to make peace with the demon king. He had a child and lived happily ever after. But he continued to miss Japan and left behind a book of things that can be useful for the same. Reincarnated other people like himself, who may someday appear. This is the essence of the hero's book. Cain did not think that there were other reincarnations besides him. He didn't even know that there was some kind of hero here. This is certainly shocking. But there was too much information that she had read from here, he should have thought about it. First, he had to go about his business by looking at the bills that were in front of him. The young man wanted to talk about the bills, but he couldn't last time, and decided that he would use this book. Therefore, when he approached Lydia's father and mother, he wanted to tell them about it. The parents decided that something must have happened, but the young man assured them that everything was fine. Cain wanted them to see something by showing them the abacus. He invited them to see how it worked. They had abacus number 8 in front of them. Our hero thought that since they were looking at it, then there probably already is an abacus in this world. And then it seemed to him that maybe they would not want to get something made by a child. Cain was very worried about what his parents would say after looking at this subject for a long time. My father started talking first and he didn't understand what kind of thing it was that had a lot of balloons on it. Our hero explained that this is an abacus, a tool that is used in arithmetic. Arithmetic has not been heard of in this world either. Our hero explained that the balls on this thing represent the number 5 and showed how to use it. The worried parents were very encouraged that Cain had done such a thing. This way it will be much easier and faster to solve mathematical problems. Lydia decided to call Randolph. The butler who appeared immediately realized that they wanted to see him. Then the father explained that he would like him to take a look at something and our hero explained to the butler how it works. Randolph, of course, like everyone else, had never seen such a thing in all the years of his life. Our hero was very glad that such a thing did not exist in this world. The next moment, everyone was wondering how Mr. Kane created this, and they all looked at our hero attentively, wanting to hear an answer from him. The young man thought that it would be strange if a six-year-old child already knows so well about Abacus. Because of him, our hero could get into trouble and he decided that it was just written in the hero's book. Of course, this was a lie, because in fact it was not written there. Maybe it was, but our hero hasn't exactly read about it yet. Lydia was surprised again, because the young man could really read this book. Cain protested that he didn't mean it that way. There were pictures in it, he made an item using earth magic. Cain explained that he had already figured out how to use it. The numbers were in the language of their country, so he kind of understood everything. Our hero tried to justify himself as best he could, because he explained that he never thought he would be able to solve the arithmetic that they were going through in class in such a simple and understandable way. And Alice will be very happy when he gives it to her. Now the father understood what it meant that only Cain could do the object, giving a signal to Randolph. The butler was wondering how many of these things Mr. Cain could make in a day. Cain said that he only needed land as well as material, so he could make 100 or 200 a day if he worked hard. Then Randolph asked me to make them right now. The soil was brought for our hero and he decided to start. And he would make an object out of it, looking at the ground that was right in front of him, using a clay creation. A second later, an object appeared in front of them. When Lydia saw this, she started hugging our hero, thinking that it was just fantastic that he could do such things. My father also admired the bills, looking at them carefully. Randolph added that it might help them rebuild the St. Rose family. The father, turning to Cain, asked him to do him a favor. Father, of course, did not want to put pressure on our hero, but asked to make such items in abundance. Cain, of course, could have done it, but he did not understand why his father needed it. So he just decided to agree with him, and his father thanked him for the fact that his son was ready to help him. That's what they did. Cain spent every day making abacuses. So time passed, and his 2,000 abacuses were already completed. There was a giant pyramid of these devices in front of Cain, and it certainly looked strange. Cain just wanted to make one for his sister Alice, but his father saw it as a brilliant idea. He was going to take this abacus to the commercial guild. 
If it works out, maybe he will start receiving royalties. Cain, of course, could not believe that his father saw the benefit of this, but my father thought that Cain probably didn't understand this yet. Of course, our hero couldn't tell us that he understood so many things that it was better not to talk about it yet but he decided not to tell his father about it. Meanwhile, the same one asked Randolph to make preparations. Our hero went with Randolph to the merchant guild, and so his first abacus was brought to this merchant guild. The young man became curious, which is why he just went along with Randolph, who was showing this item at the guild at that moment. The guild secretary listened incredulously at first, but eventually his eyes lit up and he looked admiringly at this object. After successfully registering the abacus, Kane had to add a new special insignia. The sign was in case someone released a similar product, there was nothing to do here. And our hero decided to ask a question. Because if a similar product appears, there will be a fight for authenticity or it will be solved in some other way. The young man was simply told that everything was the will of the god Hermes, the patron saint of trade, which was not the most understandable answer. But it was logical, because of course no one would complain about God's decision. So a few days later he was recognized as the first developer of the Abacus, and father and mother Lydia were very pleased. But what surprised him more was that Randolph sold his Abacuses for three gold coins apiece, and brought the money to their estate. There are copper and silver, gold and platinum coins in this world. Each has a nominal value of 100 conventional units. If a copper coin is worth 10, then a gold coin is worth 100,000. And they sold all the abacuses for 6,000 gold coins. In other words, it's 600 million yen. It seemed to our hero that this was too huge a figure to really feel it. Randolph clearly knew what he was doing. This was an unaffordable amount while working as an employee of the company, which was previously our hero. Our hero probably decided that after that they dealt with the issues at home. But my father believed that they had solved the urgent problem of money, and while they had a little time left, they should repair the castle walls and improve the roads before winter, and they would have to spend the remaining money carefully, the father and the butler said among themselves. Our hero understood that it seemed to him that they had solved this problem, but in fact it was not so, they still had a lot to do. My father took great care of the people who lived on his estate. He really was a real lord and our hero, of course, wanted to help him. Turning to his father, Cain offered to make additional abacuses. He could still make things. Hearing this, the father was surprised and was very glad that our hero was ready to help him. And so the young man created another thousand bucks in a few days. After that, turning to his father, he told him that he had finally finished. My father was very grateful to Cain. His son helped him a lot. This time, he would save people from many difficulties, and he was proud that Cain was his son, patting the young man on the head which made the young man incredibly happy, because he was pleased when the magic of the earth helped people so much. The father said that he discussed this with Lydia, that Cain should have been rewarded for his contribution, even if he was just a child. Therefore, if our hero wanted something, he had to tell us about it. Of course, in a previous life, the young man would have asked for a share of the proceeds, but he is only six years old, and he cannot spend the money even if he had it. Therefore, he did not know what to do. The young man didn't have anything specific, but if he didn't ask for something, he would waste the opportunity. Cain was still poor at desires from his previous life. Cain decided that there was something he wanted to ask for. Therefore, turning to his father, he wanted to eat two satsumas when they would cook them next time. Hearing that the young man's wish was satsumu, the father was very surprised, because he thought that his son would ask for something to give him or perhaps something else. But I decided that since it was the young man's wish, the next time they fried satsuma, he would eat two, which our hero was incredibly happy about. Now they can look forward to tasting delicious satsuma and continue to develop their territory. Our hero was happy that everything was resolved this way. In the morning, the sun was shining as always, and the maids who got up quite early did not understand why it was always so hot in the morning. This made it difficult to work the morning shift. Almost everyone sleeps at this time. Then they saw our hero, who wished them a good day too, and the young men, having already woken up, were full of strength. The girls were surprised that he got up so early. Kane explained that he was going for a run, and that he would be back for breakfast. Having said goodbye to the girls, the young man ran away. The maids, hearing about the run, were very surprised that Mr. Kainel Kane, who was only a six-year-old child, but the gentleman was such a strong boy, they had to follow his example. All the maids decided to follow the example of our hero and were just as cheerful in the morning.
to which the butler saw what kind of morale the maids had, and that today was unusually high. With the aim of forming an estate, he immediately took action. First, the young man performed preparatory exercises. Firstly, I needed to strengthen my physical fitness, so I decided to improve all my indicators. Our hero woke up at 6 in the morning to gain physical strength and attended classes with his sister Alice until lunch. Afterwards, the young man practiced earth magic and magical manipulation in the training area. He studied by reading the book of the hero and other books in the library. I practiced restoration magic 20 times a day, and after three months, he finally improved his performance. Our hero now has additional items for earth magic and restoration magic. He saw on the system table that in front of him was new earth magic, sand, dirt and drainage. Our hero decided to think about how he could use this and realized that restoring the area was good, which was now offered to him. It will also be useful to heal a lot of people, since healing magic has also been improved. But it's better of course if no one gets hurt. Remembering Linner, Cain thought about his magic, which he inherited from his mother, and he wanted to use it to save people. At this rate, he knew that he would master the most useful magic. And before studying in the library, our hero was going to check the Satsumi beds. Just at that moment he saw Hardy, who was tending to the weeds. The young man thanked Hardy for his good work, asking how the Satsuma was doing. The seedlings were doing just fine according to Hardy. The field he sown is growing well, but Mr. Kane's field looks much better, show the field that was in front of the young man. The Satsumas and the seedlings planted the way Kaina came up with were amazing, almost all of them seem to have taken root. Hardy's fields are also taking root better than usual, not as well as Mr. Ma Kane's field, showing the difference between the two. And next year our hero wanted to start with Gardy seedlings. This will be even more surprising of course Hardy agreed with him and suggested making a lot of Satsuma to surprise everyone. Having pulled out all the weeds, Hardy was going to return to the estate, asking if our hero was going there. And of course, Kane was heading to the estate. Hardy believed that after clearing the field it was time to rest and that it was a good idea. While they were moving towards the estate, Hardy saw something that upset him, and looking in the direction where Hardy was looking, our hero saw that someone had trampled all the way. Hardy understood that because of the rain the day before yesterday, a mess had formed on the road leading to the estate, and people would have to walk on it before it dried out. If they do not disturb the sand before the owner returns, then ruts will form and the cart will not be able to travel further. Apologizing to Mr. K Kane, Hardy explained that he needed to go get sand and invited the young man to return alone. Our hero at that moment remembered that he could use new earth magic. The young man asked Hardy to stop for a minute because for this magic he needed a board or a large spatula, or perhaps something that could be used to level the ground. The young man needed something square in shape to make the ground level and Hardy had it, so our hero decided that he needed to get started and use his magic. After all, this was not the time to get tired, he needed to help people. Using dirt, our hero was able to create the item he needed. Hardy apologized to the young man for keeping him waiting, but our hero believed that he was just in time. He immediately tried to smooth out the dirt path. Seeing how well the young man did, Hardy realized that he had used his skills here. He thought that if the road turned to mud, the soil would become softer and easier to level. The young man was indeed right. Hardy, using his tool, could level the road much faster, which our hero of course was very happy about. Everything was ready and the road was leveled. Having done the job, Hardy now noted that all they had to do was wait for everything to dry. Our hero had already informed Hardy that there was not much left, he needed to try new magic, and now was the time. It was draining magic, just what they needed. The next moment Hardy saw the mud dry up on its own. The road was completely smooth, and Hardy was convinced by touching it. Carts should have passed through here without any problems, and it would be strange if only this area was left flat, looking at the small plot of land that they were able to cultivate. Therefore, our hero proposed to level the entire road until his father returned. 
This seemed like a good idea to Hardy, and together they set to work. So they worked together to level the road to the house. They spent a whole hour on everything, and after an hour they saw how smooth the road was. The guys were very happy and our hero thanked Hardy. After all, thanks to him, they were able to clear the road in a very short time. Hardy believed that everything was thanks to the magic of the earth of Mr. Khan Kane, but they got really dirty and they had to go together to the well and put themselves in order. Our hero, heading to the well with Hardy, hoped that his father would notice. Still, he will drive along it, but on the other hand, father often reads his newspaper in the carriage, so maybe he won't notice. Having cleansed ourselves, our hero went to the mansion to study. The next moment, while he was reading the book, he heard his father shouting. The father came to see him and saw our hero. The father was so excited that Cain was afraid that something might have happened. But the father only inquired about the leveled road to the house, seeing how beautiful the road was made near the estate. Cain said that he and Hardy passed by and decided to help, but perhaps he shouldn't have done this, seeing how alarmed his father was, our hero thought. But that was not the case. His father apologized to him because he didn't want to scare him, realizing that that's exactly what he did. Just the opposite. When they drove through the gates of the mansion, the vibrations disappeared completely, and the father thought that something was wrong. He had never driven on such a smooth and clean road. My father thought that our hero did a wonderful job and wanted to give him his gift. Having placed his palms in front of his father, our hero received a silver coin in his hands and was very grateful for it. The young man was very glad that he managed to please his father and he decided to share her with Hardy. The father noticed that it was very nice of the young man and that he decided to share. But the father explained that he would pay Hardy separately, so it was just for him. Our hero was even happier for this and thanked his father, and later Hardy thanked him for the award. A few days later it rained, and going outside, our hero saw puddles near the estate. He had worked so hard with Hardy on the road, but if they leveled the road using the same method, it would be the same after the rain. Therefore, our hero thought that he should have done a better way. Thinking hard, the young man came up with an idea because it was necessary to make a road out of cobblestones like in old Europe. He decided to make it, relying on knowledge from a past life. It was stone and earth, so he could do anything with his earth magic. Kane decided to write it down on a piece of paper before he forgot. Arriving at the office, our hero wrote down a plan of the cobblestone street. This plan meant creating a lot of stones and placing them on the road using magic. Then, also using magic, cover the road with mud and the depth should have been 10 cm. Then dry the dirt using drying magic and make the surface slightly rough and unsmooth. Place the stones at intervals of 1 cm from each other so that they do not stick. Having written all this down, it seemed to our hero that this was the least time-consuming method. But then he thought about how much work there was to do. If you do it quickly, then nothing will work, but our hero would like to start from the very beginning. And he was thinking about wells, and for this he needed to check with Randolph for information. He would also need Hardy's help, so he decided to tell him about this too. Initially, our hero went to Randolph, and after giving him the paper, he asked what his butler would say about it. Seeing the plan that the young man had drawn up, the butler decided to ask whether he had really made it. Seeing that the butler was studying that plan very carefully, the young man said that it was indeed he who came up with it. Randolph believed that the young master seemed to have the qualities of a ruler. At this moment, there was a beaming smile on his face, and it was difficult for our hero to understand what he was thinking about. But it seemed to him that everything was in order. And this was indeed the case, because the butler suggested that tomorrow they would go around another well, and then he would report all this to the head. Our hero was happy that Randolph agreed to this. Everyone thanked the gentleman, but be that as it may, according to Randolph's calculations, the young man would need about five days to complete all sections of the road to the mansion. Our hero realized that his and Randolph's calculations were the same and was very happy. After all, it turned out exactly the same way for him. 
The young man was sure that they could reduce the time frame if they had a few more people. But the estate's policy was not to have excess staff. To which our hero asked not to worry because he will do everything possible to improve. Addressing Mr. Ganea Kane, Randolph noted that he had grown into a smart boy, as if he had become a different person after he came down with an injury. Our hero thought that perhaps the butler suspected something. At this point, Randolph simply bowed to him, saying that they were all very happy to see his success. And our hero noticed, a tear gathered in the corner of his eye. The young man was very touched. The young man believed that they would definitely make sure that the cobblestones were a great success. Running away from Randolph with a plan, our hero decided that he needed to make every effort. Kane, turning to Hardy, invited him to go straight to him. At that moment they were standing near the well. He and Hardy came to the well, which is located behind the mansion, and planned to pave the ground around the well according to the plan they had drawn up. First they needed to draw a line to delineate the area to work on. Having done this, the youth now explained that there was a line of stones. Using magic, our hero created many stones. There were as many as 300 pieces in front of him, and he thought that this should have been enough. Next, according to plan, there was mud, and the young man asked Hardy to help him. They turned the ground into mud and laid out stones. After about a quarter of an hour, the final touch was ready using dehumidification. Our hero and Hardy succeeded. Just a cobblestone street, as it seemed to Hardy. Indeed, with this method, even if the earth floods everything, the stones will remain, so there will be no puddles, because the water will be absorbed into the soil in the cracks. Our hero, watching this, was happy. But then he noticed that it looked clumsy in places, he was confused by the layout of the stones and the lumpy soil between them. Hardy thought it was normal. But it seems that a certain amount of area can be processed in a day, and we also need to come up with something so that the road in front of the mansion is paved. Kane decided that he would discuss this with Randolph and asked if Hardy would join them. Hardy of course wanted to do it. Interrupting their cheerful conversation, Lydia found them. She has finally found our hero. She was unhappy that he did not come to dinner, and therefore went in search of him. And the young man was again fussing in the dirt, looking at his clothes, Lydia noticed and asked him to go change clothes while she wiped his face. Our hero, on the contrary, was worried about Lydia's clothes because he could get them dirty. The girl asked not to worry about such a trifle. She also needed to talk about it with Luke. Cain saw that he had upset his mother again, but everything went according to plan. Hardy, watching his mother drag him into the house, saw that the young man was smiling and was very surprised by this. After lunch he and Hardy returned to the well and resumed their work of clearing the ground around it. Then their father and Randolph came to them. Mother apparently told him about the cobblestones. They had to get this over with quickly. After which everything was finally ready and a cobblestone road also led to the well. Hardy was the city Mr. Kenal Kane because he managed. Our hero was glad that they managed to finish before dinner. Randolph and our hero's father were also happy to see the young man's success, and as it seemed to Kane, the presentation was a success. And when our hero returned to the estate, his father would like to officially offer him a job paving the paths in the mansion. Our hero was surprised when he heard about the work. Father noticed that Randolph explained everything to him. These cobblestones were great, so they wouldn't have to worry about mud when it rained. Hearing this, our hero was very glad that his father liked it and was grateful to him for the compliment. Now the young man could practice earth magic more openly, which he was incredibly happy about. My father said that after the road to the mansion was built, he wanted to add something. But it seemed that it was too much, so he decided to remain silent. Hearing that Luke wanted to add something, the butler asked the gentleman to share his thoughts with them, realizing that it might have been very difficult for him. The father finally gathered his thoughts and decided that he would do it, but it seemed to him that it was a rather crazy plan, after which he sat in silence. Our hero, hearing this, became very interested in what kind of plan his father had come up with and therefore asked him to tell him. 
the father decided to share with the young man because he wanted the main street of their city to be paved with cobblestones in two months. Hearing this, the young man was surprised because as far as he remembered, its length was about one kilometer. With two people the work would take a year because the street was also 7m wide. My father allocated a budget of 200 gold. Our hero was already thinking only about what was coming in two months. But my father believed that the plan was unrealistic anyway. And there was enough road to the mansion, they should have stopped there. Our hero took this as a challenge and decided that this was just a great opportunity. After all, the construction of the main road was a big deal. Turning to his father, our hero decided that he would take on this. Hearing this, the father was very excited. The young man asked him not to worry because he was sure that they would cope. If they have more people, he will come up with another plan to get them finished as quickly as possible. After a pause, the father decided to agree with his son and left all this work to Cain, asking the young man not to overdo it. Hearing that his father relied on him, our hero was incredibly happy and ran out the door because he was entrusted with such an important matter. Therefore, the young man decided that he could immediately begin to implement it. Turning to Randolph, our hero's father explained that he would not need the help of his butler. Of course, the butler was unable to refuse him. When our hero left they talked about it. The next day and only now, our hero began to feel pressure on himself. They had enough money and a lot of people, but the young man did not know whether he would succeed or not. And also our hero felt weakness throughout his body. Now he had a meeting ahead of him. Seeing Alice, the young man understood that today was apparently also the day of classes and for him, they still lasted several days, as far as our hero remembered. Then he heard that the teacher praised Alice because she began to understand arithmetic better as she began to use the abacus. And our hero was very happy when his magic gave someone a smile. Cain wanted the others to be happy too, so there was no time to be discouraged. Our hero knew that he would succeed. He came to the office where the butler and Hardy were waiting for him. Hardy explained yesterday's work to Randolph, drawing a diagram. Hardy told what was difficult about her then. They discussed how to lay out the road smoothly and all the intricacies of this work that they had to do. It will be difficult to finish the plan in two months without involving a lot of people. Construction is based on Kane's magic, which accounts for more than 70% of the work. The butler thought the workload was enormous. But our hero was inspired, explaining that he could handle it. Arranging stones in a row is not that difficult from a magical point of view. But then they all sank together, realizing that it was really difficult. Mr. Kane had to understand that Hardy was not very good at magic, but if the young man made stones with magic and with its help turned the soil into mud and then he laid out the road as he understood. Therefore, he proposed to turn the soil directly into stone using magic. Our hero realized that this was a brilliant idea, turning to Hardy. First of all, magic is an image, so if there is a good image, then using magic everything could work out. Kane thanked Hardy again for being such a smart man. So Hardy was even a little embarrassed. Our hero now proposed to try it right now and first they would go outside and practice. It's better to make a mistake now than for them to make a mistake later, as he thought as he ran out of the office. When they went outside, they first decided to practice in a small area and gradually increase the size. Therefore, Hardy had to draw a couple of 1m by 1m squares. Hardy of course wanted to do this right away, and in the meantime our hero decided that he would prepare his magic. Using circulation with a distance between stones of 10 m, he needed to lay out 80 stones, which means they circulated about 100 magical powers, leaving room for control. Our hero had never controlled so much magic at once before, so the control was soon to end. Kane decided to concentrate entirely on his magic while Hardy and the butler watched him. When he finally concentrated, the young man placed his hands on the ground and it was time to begin. Kane ordered the stones to appear. A second later, stones appeared on the road, and seeing this, Hardy and Randolph looked in surprise at what our hero could do. The young man still managed to turn him into stone, but he was pretty tired. 
Randolph thanked the young man for his excellent work. For the first time it was very good. Our hero still believed that the stones were uneven. The gaps between them were uneven, so it seemed to him that something had turned out ugly. He didn't even know how to fix it. Hardy looked at our hero carefully. And then the butler suggested drawing lines to make it easier to imagine. Kane commented that this was a great idea, thanking his butler. The next moment, Hardy began to draw lines on the ground to make it easier for the young man to work. Using the base of his magic and calling on the stones, our hero saw that this time all the stones were where they needed to be and lay more evenly. Perhaps everything was because it is easier to visualize when there are lines. But where it is drawn crookedly, the stones do not line up neatly and are distorted. Hardy knew nothing about magic, and then Hardy remembered that he had several friends who used magic. They all did the same magic, causing the same phenomena and everything was the same, but none of them could modify the magic like Mr. Kane. Hardy thought about this as he carefully watched our hero. The young man, meanwhile, suggested using a ruler for everything and drawing a straight line. He just found the right one and suggested that the guys use the board as a ruler to make it easier for them to draw. And in any situation the young man showed intelligence and imagination. After all, this is the only way to find a new path, Hardy thought about him. Hardy thought about what a magnificent and truly amazing person Kane was. The next moment, when they had laid out a smooth path, our hero decided to try a third time, using a stone, and they succeeded, our heroes were already actually finishing the road to the mansion, just as Kane's father was surprised when he saw them. Butler revealed that they were in the process of completing it, and would like to see it in action, turning to him. Father finally came to look and saw Kane and Hardy drawing lines, looking at the pavement that was near the mansion. The young man explained that they would now turn this place into a stone pavement, so he could have a look. The next moment, the young man ordered the stone to appear, and then the entire pavement around the mansion was completed, and it looked simply magnificent. Randolph noticed that perhaps Mr. Cocaine would be able to carry out such a crazy plan that his father had come up with. At that moment, they all rejoiced together and were surprised at how talented the young man was, and that he still managed to make a pavement around the entire mansion. And now it's the turn of the main street. When our heroes arrived in the city, everyone saw Mr. Kane, Kane and Alice, realizing that these were the children of their master. Alice, meanwhile, held Kane's hand and asked him to hold on to it, otherwise he could easily get lost. Today they came to the city to inspect the paving of the main street. Our hero was supposed to go along with Hardy and Randolph, but Alice, seeing that they were going somewhere, was also going to go with them to the main street. Alice burst through her father's door while they were discussing this, he immediately guessed that she had been eavesdropping on them. The girl, rushing at her father, explained that it was unfair that only Kane could visit the city. Every day she sat in her room and studied. The father understood that it was indeed unfair to his daughter, deciding that Alice could also go with them. Our hero was very sorry that his father could not marry her off. When Alice pulled him right along with her, the young man did not feel very well. And while they were running through the city, the young man watched the streets and felt the smell of waste mixed with food. But everyone behaves naturally, and only he thought the smell was strange. Having stopped, the young man turned to Randolph and wanted to make sure that the width of the main road was about 7m. It was something like this, but with each turn towards the castle gate it becomes wider, and eventually it will become 8m. The narrowing of the road as you move away from the gate has two meanings. Slows down the advance of the attacker and facilitates the transition to the gate. To the main street it smoothly descends to the gate. Its length is about one kilometer. After listening to Randolph, our hero noticed that it was quite a long way. The road is so wide that it cannot be completed in a day or two. A complete closure would interfere with the lives of local residents, Kane thought to himself, and the road could not be the same as the road in front of the estate. He decided that this was something he needed to think about at home. And our hero, while Alice was distracted, suggested that the guys make a model of this city. Hardy thought that Kane probably needed her for the project, 
and it was as Hardy noted. The layout is simply necessary. Nevertheless, there is a big difference between the view from the spot and from the side. Turning to Randolph, the young man knew that he probably had a map or diagram of the main road and asked to introduce him to someone who understood the layout of the city. Randolph explained that he would come back and make some adjustments and then call someone from the authorities. Our hero was grateful to him for his help, but for now he decided to take a good look at the city. The butler left, and our hero went to explore the city. He watched him carefully, after finishing the inspection, Randolph took them on a carriage, and our hero was very happy about this, because it was hard to walk the whole way. Randolph was confident in the meantime that the man in charge would soon be here. And a girl approached them, who was very pleased to meet Mr. Karis Kane, introducing herself as Noel. She is the head of the maintenance department. Seeing the beautiful girl, our hero was very glad that she was smiling, and Hardy, noticing her, immediately became interested in her. The girl, without paying attention, decided that they had to go straight to the conference room to discuss all the necessary matters. Meanwhile, our hero, turning to Hardy, asked to do him a favor, but Hardy didn't hear him at all. He stared at the girl, and then our hero had to call out to him two times, which made Hardy even a little awkward. The man apologized to Kane because he was thinking about his own. Our heroes headed towards the conference room. Alice had an appointment with Lydia, so the girl left them. Our hero went there alone, he was looking forward to working with Noel today. The butler, seeing that the young man bowed to Noel, whispered in his ear that our hero was the son of a nobleman, and therefore should not bow to vassals. Turning to Noel, our hero asked if the girl had brought the map of the dimensions he asked for. And the girl immediately took them out. If he lines up all these parchments, he will get a map of the capital. Kane thought that this card was too big and asked if the girl had the same one, but two times smaller. The same one explained with surprise that she had several, but they would not be so accurate. Our hero thought to himself that the map was too big to look at. When they make models, they should have made two times smaller. It was necessary to carefully examine this map that was provided to him. Meanwhile Hardy came along with his assistants and showed him that they had brought a large quantity of soil, as he had asked. Seeing this quantity, our hero looked at it carefully, and there was just as much as he needed. Kane would like to thank Hardy for this work. Noel was wondering what Mr. B Kane was going to do with this soil and Hardy was sure that he would do something incredible again, answering the girl's question. Our hero wanted to make a model based on the map, and first he had to concentrate again, imagine the model from the map data, and then use the clay creation. After which a model of the city appeared in front of our hero and everyone else. Everyone was pleasantly surprised when they saw him. Our hero showed a layout in three planes. Hardy thought it was simply amazing, as expected from Mr. Kenner Kane. It was a very convenient way to understand the city at once. Noel, who met our hero and his skills, was surprised by this. The girl thought to herself that this was simply impossible, the young man studied the map just a few hours ago, and then created an entire city. The places that Kane did not have time to see today were created with the help of his imagination so they were not very good, as the boy thought. Noel took into account the possibilities, and now this young man's ability can be used to create tactics for the siege of the city. The butler immediately thought that there would be more problems if other houses or the royal family learned about Kane's power. Our hero asked if they could move the model to his table. He was sure that it would be more convenient to look at. Mr. Karana Kane spoke about the work done as if it were some kind of trifle, as everyone understood. The butler at that moment was thinking that depending on how to use his abilities, the young man could do good or evil. They had to keep a close eye on Mr. Kane Kane to make sure bad people didn't take advantage of him in the future. Kane was still explaining that if you look from the other side, the main street smoothly slopes down to the gate and if they build a canal it will prevent the accumulation of water, pointing to the model. 
but having heard about the ditch, Noel, for example, did not understand him and our hero explained that ditches are ditches that are built at the edge of the road so that rain and other water falling on the road flows into the ditches and does not accumulate in puddles. Preventing questions from Noel and the others, our hero immediately added that he learned this from some book, and everyone immediately noticed that Mr. King Kane knew a lot. But he still had a lot to learn. And Hardy was wondering what Mr. Kane plans to do with the water that flows into the ditch. Our hero knew that usually it was lowered into the sewer, but in this city there are no such technologies. Therefore, the question arose about how city wastewater is now treated, our hero asked. The girl thought that currently the city wastewater was simply washed out of the house. Hearing this, Kane thought about an unhygienic method of cleaning. No wonder they didn't spread an epidemic or anything like that. Now the young man understood the reason for the bad smell in the city, which he noticed the last time they came to inspect the road. Noel added that in big cities there are places where water is treated with mucus. Neil's partners understood what the girl was talking about because they also heard about cleansing with mucus. And our hero was the only one who did not understand what we were talking about. Then he wondered what the mucus cleansing was. The girl explained that slime purification is a method of diverting water outside the city walls and storing it in a reservoir, which is then automatically purified by mucus. When mucus finds debris or dirty water, it comes out and cleans everything, and to be precise, they absorb and dissolve all substances except water. Our hero did not know what if such a method. Another world was so unusual for our hero. He thought to himself, because he had never heard of this before. In a world without sewers, slime cleaning may be the best way to go. And our hero explained that he would like to bring this to their city, turning to Randolph. The young man asked if the butler could make the fool lead outside the city walls, they could not place the slime inside the walls. The butler explained that it all depended on how our hero wanted to build it, and he thought it could be done as long as it did not affect the defense. In the end, there had never been such a precedent and our hero became interested in how far away from the walls it was safe to build a reservoir. Perhaps it was a distance of about one kilometer, he thought out loud. Upon hearing, Noel explained that it didn't have to be that far. Slugs themselves are weak demons. If too many of them gather, the guild of adventurers will exterminate them. Now our hero understands everything. He is a little sorry that they will have to exterminate the licks for the sake of cleaning. But it was probably normal. And for defeating them, Noel added that Kane could receive a reward. If we integrate the existing systems of this world into his knowledge from his past life, we will get a very good city, our hero thought with enthusiasm. Looking again at the layout, he suggested continuing work according to plan. Everyone was inspired and agreed with him. And as a result of their discussion, they settled on this method of drainage. Method of draining rainwater and constructing treatment ponds, channels with a diameter of about 30 cm will be made on both sides of the road, in which holes will be drilled every few meters to collect rainwater. The ditch goes underground about 20 m to the castle gate and goes beyond it. While the ditches are sinking into the ground, another tank is built 300 meters away, in which mucus cleaning takes place. Having shown this plan, our hero to his father, Luke also joined the process. Then our hero turned to Alice. Alice carefully drew a bird, the girl explained that of course it was not a bird, it was a wolf, and did not understand what was wrong with Kane's eyes. Turning to Kane, Lydia was curious about what kind of design he could make. In principle, it could be anything, as long as there weren't too many spaces, our hero added, after thinking about it a little. Our hero turned to his mother Lydia and sister Alice, so that they could develop the design of the cobblestones. He thought the project would go more smoothly if he involved them in the work. They decided to add designs to some of the cobblestones to make them visually pleasing. Lydia asked to give her a few days to think things over. Alice's paintings were a little avant-garde, as Kane thought as he left the office in which the girls were working. Now he planned to close the main road to traffic for half an hour at lunchtime and for half an hour in the evening. 
The reason is that it will be easier for people to organize if the road is closed for only half an hour. However, he had to do the job quickly so as not to disturb everyone's lives. And while the residents crowded and watched what our hero was doing, he was protected by Hardy and the rest of Noel's assistants so that no one would disturb the young man while he was working. This way our hero could complete his task more easily. Using circulation, the young man began to create. Just at this moment Hardy finished drawing a line by which our hero could navigate, and he began his work. Using the power of the stone, our hero made the pavement. The people who watched this thought how great it was and couldn't believe their eyes that a young man could do such a thing. Our hero invited everyone else to continue and Hardy, standing next to him, agreed. Meanwhile, while they were blocking the passage, our hero used his magic. The butler, turning to Mr. Kembe Kane, explained that almost 30 minutes had passed. Time, it seemed to them, passed very quickly. Our hero is even a little tired. The guys stopped blocking the city and showed their creations to the residents. Residents of the city, seeing this road, noticed that it was very easy to walk along it. This way they won't get dirty when it rains, and everyone looked with admiration at what our hero did. The young man was very pleased because the townspeople liked it and decided that now they could work in the evening. After which our heroes returned in the evening to finish some part of the work. This is how work on their paving project progressed. At the same time, drainage work continued. All that was left was to decide what was wrong with the design. As Lydia asked, a few days came, and she and Alice finally decided on a design. It was decided to use the entire width of the road, every 100m to create cobblestones laid out in floral patterns, lilies, sunflowers and other options. The road will look very festive, and our hero thought after looking at the layout that they would use this. Everyone thanked the young man for doing this for the whole city. It was incredible for all the townspeople. They were very happy. And if Mr. Kane worked so hard, then they had to keep up with him. They really liked this road that the young man came up with for them. The children also rejoiced when Mr. Kane came to town. They carefully watched his magic, repeating after him. Our hero finished work and politely said goodbye to everyone. But one day he was offered to taste their meat on skewers and Kane could not refuse, thanking the woman who offered it to him. The butler, watching the young man, was very happy. He mentally praised Kane because thanks to these works, they would better know the mood of the people. So a month and a half passed and everything was finally ready. Looking at his works, our hero saw a pavement that extended for 1 km, like all his friends who helped him, as well as all the residents of the city. Everyone was happy, now they understood that it would be easier for them to trade, and everyone was grateful to the young man. They threw a big feast in honor of Cain and everyone rejoiced just like our hero. He may not have been the chosen hero, but he was happy because people were happy thanks to his magic. Cain was glad that he got earth magic. The father, watching from the window in his estate, saw that it was finally over and the people looked happy. It was great, he had never seen anything like this in the capital. Maybe people will start talking about this all over the country and people will start coming from other lands. This made him very happy. One fine day, the father burst through the doors of the estate, explaining that his father-in-law was coming to check. At that moment, all our heroes were playing cards, and when they heard this, they were surprised. Border Count Shittles from a neighboring fiefdom is Lydia's father. Luke became a relative by coincidence. Our hero also met him when he was a couple of years old, but he didn't remember him at all, because he was too young then. As Kane noted, they did not have the best relationship, looking at his father. The father explained that this man was a very strict person. Lydia added that, nevertheless, his visit was a complete surprise. Luke thought that he had probably heard rumors about the cobblestone street. It was very nice of him to come, but it was still very uncomfortable. Our hero thought about what needed to be done about his arrival. And that was the point, that was the rub. Turning to Kane, the father explained that their house of St. Rose did not have such specialization. The father decided that he would ask the knights to hunt the monster in the area and cook the demon meat. 
Seeing how self-confident his father was, our hero even closed his eyes because of how he glowed with his confidence. Lydia asked not to try so hard because the cobbled streets were quite enough. Alice thought that if only they had some good food to treat Grandpa to. Our hero, remembering this, thought that it was true, as it seemed to him, that the territory of St. Rose looked simple. The young man remembered his former world. After all, in the old world, he ate mostly store-bought food, so he's not at all against homemade food. But now he needed a special kitchen, and then he remembered the hero's book. He was sure it talked about cultivation and seasoning. Therefore, turning to his mother and father, he explained that they could serve a delicious dish from the hero's book. Surely grandfather knows nothing about her and will be surprised. Father and mother looked at our hero so strangely. So Kane thought that he had said something wrong. But the next moment they changed their faces because they thought it was a great idea. Lydia again began to interrogate the young man because he probably could still read this book. As soon as she asked about it, father and mother looked at each other. Our hero thought that everything was lost because he hid the fact that he could read the hero's book. But he was glad that they were happy with his proposal. The father thought that if the young man could read the hero's book, then it is not surprising that he knew about the use of abacus and cobblestone structures. Our hero thought that however, this was just knowledge from a past life, but he would not talk about it. In any case, they decided not to dwell on it, because they had very little time and already needed to start something. Then our hero decided that he would bring the hero's book. Randolph should have called the chef. When they called the chef of the St. Rose family, as the chef understood, he had to check whether the spices that Mr. Kane would name existed. The young man explained that the boss understood everything correctly. Kane wanted to make sure the cook was familiar with the seasonings he would be working with. Having thus checked the seasonings and ingredients, our hero received special permission to bring a book this time. As he thought, there were things in it that existed in his previous world, but not in this one. For example, in this world there was no ketchup, but there was mayonnaise, there was no Worcestershire sauce, but there was soy sauce like soybeans. There was also no miso, which is like soybean paste or sweet rice wine for cooking. But Kane was lucky to have soy sauce. Now I had to check the ingredients. They had potatoes, tomatoes, onions and garlic. He was very glad that potatoes, which he missed most, existed here. Goat oil is quite difficult to obtain and was available but unusable. There was no milk either, and the possible alternatives they had were wild ox, beef, orc pork, and horned chicken. There are similar types of meat in this world, which our hero was very happy about. But the only thing that surprised the young man was why the names of the ingredients sounded so similar. At this moment, the cook, interrupting his thoughts, asked if there was anything else that the young man could tell him about. Kane remembered that he had one last question. Are there any dishes in this memo that Chef Lloyd knows about by showing him the paper? Lloyd glanced at the paper containing the list of dishes. The first one was a salad with potatoes, ham and mayonnaise. The second course is a salad with pasta, ham, onions and mayonnaise. The third course, meat dishes, mainly orc bowl meat and minced rolled and grilled. The fourth dish is orc meat, wrapped in thin bread and fried in oil. The fifth course was horned chicken, seasoned with salt and potatoes, dusted with flour and deep fried. The sixth dish was a horned chicken omelet with eggs and sugar. The seventh dish is meat prepared from chicken with horns. Having read carefully about all these dishes, the chef did not think that he had heard or eaten anything similar except for one, two and three. He asked Mr. Candice Randolph if he knew anything about these dishes. Randolph thought they resembled meat dishes made from meat scraps, but they were distinguished by their boldness. After thinking a little, the father asked why the chef could not cook everything on the list, since they had to try before judging. Lydia wondered if it was possible, and her father, in turn, wondered why not. They could try it, just as our hero thought to himself that his father was right. After all, until they cook, they won't know. The chef didn't know, of course, whether he could do it. Turning to Chef Lloyd, our hero also asked him, because he was his only hope. 
At that moment, the young man looked at him with his kind eyes, and the chef could not resist him. If Cain continued to look at him and ask in that voice, then all he could do was agree. Of course, maybe Lloyd couldn't say that, but it's not just that he's been a chef for many years. Therefore, Lloyd agreed to cook all these dishes that were on our hero's list. And everyone was very happy that the chef was also so enthusiastic. Chef Lloyd managed to gather all the ingredients and they began cooking. Our hero stood in the kitchen watching the chef from around the corner. At that moment, the butler noticed him, inviting Mr. Kane to leave. After all, here in the kitchen it was unsafe. At this point, the chef was preparing all kinds of dishes, using trial and error. Several days passed like this. Thanking everyone for their patience, the chef finally finished preparing the dishes from the hero's book and offered the whole family to enjoy them. Everyone saw the dishes the chef made. They looked simply luxurious, so everyone would like to try it quickly. Lydia immediately noticed that she had never seen such food. But it smelled simply delicious, as Alice noted. My father suggested that everyone try it first. Alice started with meat, because it was her favorite food. She was delighted to try one piece, because she had never eaten such a meat dish. It was delicious. Lydia looked at the food in front of her and thought about the unusual shape in front of her. After tasting it, she thought about how incredible it was that she had just eaten. The egg was very voluminous, and she tried the omelette that the chef had prepared. Next was Luke who tried the crispy texture and the meat that was in it, it was very appetizing and delicious. Everyone was so surprised and delighted at the same time by how delicious the food was prepared. Our hero was very happy. After all, the young man knew that the home-cooked food from his past life looked like a feast here. Now they could treat grandfather. And they all thanked Chef Lloyd. And for him, it was a great honor. The chef made his own changes to the list that our hero made, replacing it with what he knew. Kane called it a recipe for heroes. Our hero was happy and everyone clapped for him and were happy to be with him too. Grandfather, meanwhile, was thinking that he had not seen Lydia and her husband for a long time. He heard that their territory had become known as the Land of Cobblestones. They can only see this in the capital, and he really wanted to know the secret of how they did it for the development of their lands. The day of Grandpa's arrival finally arrived, and the whole family frantically awaited his arrival. Our hero thought to himself that he couldn't even count how many times the dishes were improved and fed to him over the last month. At that moment, he was just remembering Chef Lloyd and how he tried fried eggs three times in a row. The father noticed that grandfather had finally arrived. They saw a man with glasses approaching them. The man looked very stern as our hero noticed. The father, pretending that he was very brave, greeted the grandfather first and thanked him for coming to them from afar today. At that moment, the stern grandfather looked at his nephews and then smiled at them and was very happy talking about how the guys had grown. Turning to Kane, he noticed what a big boy he was already and Alice was supposed to go to school as far as he remembered and now the girl was a real lady. She was very pleased with the way her grandfather treated her and curtsied, and she looked forward to meeting him. Our hero was very surprised at how quickly Alice greeted him, and he should have greeted him properly too. So he turned to Lord Frontier and said that he was already six years old. Grandfather, looking very sadly at Kane, did not understand whether he, like Alice, had not called him grandfather before, he noticed and our hero realized that apparently he was mistaken, and grandfather talked about how bored he was for that reason. Our hero understood that he must have treated him wrongly and was very upset, thinking that perhaps this would not be his best attitude towards his grandfather. Lydia heard that her father was making his jokes again because Kane didn't even know what to do. Grandfather laughed and began to apologize and then noticed that Luke seemed to have lost weight, as far as he understood. But fortunately, Luke was in excellent physical shape and thanked him for his concern, asking his grandfather to come to their estate. Our hero watched how everyone was having a nice conversation and thought that grandfather would be worse. So they all went into the house and grandfather apologized for disturbing them with his visit. 
The merchants who come here talked so much about the beautiful streets of this city in which he was now located. Grandfather wanted to see them with his own eyes, which is why he came here. The father thanked him, because it was an honor for him. Grandfather also had not seen Lydia for a long time and inquired about her health. But as her father must have seen, Lydia was fine. Grandfather believed that she was becoming more and more like her mother Aisha. It's a wonderful feeling when she's both here and at home, the grandfather said, looking at his daughter. Lydia hoped that everything was fine with her mother because she thought that she would come with him today. Grandfather explained that this was exactly what was planned at first, but she had recently injured her leg and had to stay. Hearing this, Lydia immediately fled from her seat and began to worry very much about her mother. The father decided to assure Lydia not to worry because nothing serious had happened, she just fell when she was caring for the garden at the villa and there was no reason to worry. Since grandfather said so, Lydia decided that she could calm down and said that she herself would visit them soon. The Lord of the Frontier of course laughed and was happy about this. After taking a sip of his tea and becoming serious again, he wanted to get down to business. The road from the city to the villa was beautiful. Once again I was amazed at how different things are to see and hear about something yourself. Once the road became paved, the vibrations decreased and the speed increased. And the different colors of the road made it easier for carriages to move, so the street looked just great. After listening to his grandfather's praise, his father thanked him because they had indeed reduced the number of accidents between carriages and carts, because they determined where the transport goes in accordance with different colors, and the design of the cobblestones was the idea of Alice and Lydia. Since the cobblestones are very easy to clean, local residents gather and wash them themselves. After listening to everything that the father said, our hero noticed that this was declared possible. The cobblestone effect has increased the number of volunteers who clean the streets every day, especially in shops on the main road, and he heard that because of this, garbage used to be taken out even during the daytime, but now the situation is completely different. Kane was grateful to the residents, but he wondered why they started cleaning up this city. After all, he thought that people wanted to preserve the cobblestones because they were so beautiful. It was the honest truth. The girls who cleaned the street could not allow the cobblestones that Mr. Kanair Kane had worked so hard to get dirty. Now Grandfather understood the effect this had. He would like their city to also be paved with cobblestones, he explained to our hero and the whole family. Now the whole family understood the real reason why he came. In the end, he came here precisely for this, as Kane himself guessed. Of course, his words could be a simple request from an old man, but it's a completely different matter when it's a conversation between Lord and Lord. And here there could already be an inconsistency, because if Luke says the wrong thing, he will have to pay. And they were talking with the Count of Frontier, who is also his father-in-law, they had to be as delicate as possible. Kane realized that an unpleasant situation had broken out between his father and his grandfather. Now his father knew his real reason, if he asked him for it, he would do his best to fulfill his father-in-law's request. Hearing this, grandfather of course, was surprised that he agreed so easily. And if the road was as good as in this city, he agreed. The father agreed and asked Randolph to bring what he needed here. Of course, Randolph immediately decided to carry out his father's orders. Our hero thought that everything seemed to work well and as it should. After all, they were one family. Of course, my father knew that he would have to do this for free, but everyone tried to calm him down. The next moment, the model that Randolph brought appeared in front of the grandfather. When he saw him, he was very surprised, but he liked what Cain did. They explained to him that before laying the cobblestones, they first made this model and the details were on paper. The budget was 500 gold, and that was 25 times more than Cain spent on the project trying to figure out what would happen now. The details became clear and Grandfather would like to place an order immediately, he said, looking at our heroes. To which everyone was very surprised. Seeing their reaction, Grandfather thought that they probably had some problems. But my father immediately agreed, and they decided to start construction in the near future. 
our hero thought to himself that something like bargaining usually happened, and he did not expect that he would be asked to do this without any negotiations. The young man felt the power of Lord Frontier. He can afford what he wants. The more grandfather looked at this model, the more amazed he was, and he wondered who did it. Our hero tensed when he heard this, because given how much information the grandfather received, such a question naturally suggested itself. The father said that Cain did this using earth magic. Our hero stood in front of his grandfather, carefully observing his reaction. Grandfather, having heard about Cain, simply began to be amazed, because it was amazing. And the father suggested sharing the details after dinner, since there was really no need for a rush. Grandfather agreed. Lydia explained that they had prepared a room for him, so he could rest for now and she would show him around. And when they were alone, Lydia asked her father not to be too strict with the hatch. The father apologized to Lydia laughing because he had not provoked him for a long time. But it looks like they worked hard as he noticed, and Lydia noticed that her father saw everything himself, they worked hard on it as a family. Of course my father was glad that they got along so well, and he was pleased to see that Luke is growing as a person. But grandfather had one, but this model of the city was dangerous because probably someone else should have known these details. But Lydia said that only they and her father knew about it. They placed a ban on everyone in their house. This was more than just a model of the city and they had to be on their guard as grandfather knew. Lydia herself also understood this, so she thanked him for his care. And now Grandpa was wondering what they had for dinner today, because last time it was wonderful. Lydia said that they would have a special dinner today. Today's menu is the hero's recipes revived. Grandfather was surprised when he heard that they were cooking according to the hero's recipe. Lydia decided that she would tell him everything after dinner. When they all gathered at the table, there was food in front of Frontier, and he now understood what the food from the hero's book looked like. Looking at what stood in front of him, everything was very beautiful and he couldn't wait to try it. He wanted to start with the dish that was closest to him. After taking one bite, he froze in silence, like everyone else who was carefully watching his reaction. After which grandfather looked at the food in surprise. He understood that it was very tasty, but did not understand what it was. Our hero said that this egg dish was called an omelet and grandfather thought it was simply amazing. Luke, turning to his grandfather, said that if he wanted, he could give him today's recipe and he would like Aisha to try it too. Grandfather, having heard this, was very surprised that he was ready to share such a recipe with him, saying that Aisha would be simply delighted with this. Our hero and the cook were happy because their recipes were a success and Grandfather liked everything in the end. Frontier ate three more plates of egg rolls while the cobblestone story took its course, and the next day Grandfather had to leave. He needed Kane and the others to stay with them for a few months if they wanted to get to work. Therefore, turning to Lydia, he hoped that this was normal. Lydia reported that it was okay because she had already informed Kane about it. She will accompany them in this case. Of course this made her father happy, but a lot of adjustments need to be made, so he asked to wait until the new year. Other conditions had to be discussed with the civil officials, and they would talk about the results when everyone arrived on their territory. Lydia agreed with her grandfather, and he looked carefully at Kane, counting on him, winking at our hero. Realizing that this was very serious, our hero was also ready to help them. Thus, the grandfather left their estate, and the whole family saw him off, and then breathed a sigh of relief. Luke still managed to talk without being rude, and it was all thanks to Lydia. Our hero thought about the fact that grandfather was a very difficult person. He felt sleepy from all this tension. He needed to practice more magic so that he could implement the cobblestone project smoothly. In the meantime, he needed to take a break and sleep was the best medicine when our hero lay down on the bed and sank into it. Ben was sitting at his books at that moment when someone knocked on his door and Kane appeared outside the door. He was apologizing to his brother, but he wanted to talk about something about him. And Kane told me that he needed a consultation. The young man had several ideas to improve the quality of life on the estate, and his brother's wisdom would be useful to him. Turning to brother Ben, Kane noted. 
When Ben heard about the idea, he decided that he would listen and definitely help Kane. But first of all, I had to tell you about my ideas. And as he said, he has two things that Kane wanted to build. The first is a bathhouse, and the second is a sewer. After hearing about the bathhouse, Ben realized that our hero was talking about a large barrel of hot water and asked to clarify this. Kane confirmed his words, because baths are a very large barrel that can accommodate a dozen people at once. The young man believed that access to it would make people's lives more hygienic and reduce the number of diseases. Our hero also wanted to tell us about the sewer system. Another system, sewerage, where rainwater and wastewater from toilets in the same bathhouse are directed into a channel laid underground in the city, and wastewater is treated outside the territory and returned to the river. Our hero thought that it would also improve sanitary conditions in the city and reduce the number of diseases. After listening to all this, Ben was very surprised. He was sure that people would be happy when it was all ready. Ben thought these ideas were wonderful and when he heard this, our hero was very happy. At that moment, Ben made his gloating face again. It seemed to him that it was really great. He couldn't believe that Kane had come up with such a thing at the age of six. Our hero understood that he needed to justify himself somehow and said that he had learned about everything from the pictures in the Book of Heroes. After all, he never thought of it himself. At that moment, Ben was watching him closely and since his brother was talking, he believed him. Our hero thought that the hero's book was not only valuable information, but also an excellent excuse for him, for which he was grateful to this hero. Ben needed to find out what our hero wanted him to help him with. The young man first told me about the bathroom. Kane explained that he would need a lot of hot water and if the fire magic that Ben possessed was magic for making hot water, then the young man would like Ben to show him how to use it. Ben explained that he doesn't have fire magic to make hot water, but he does have magic to raise and lower the temperature of the water and other things. Then, asking if this would be enough for our hero. For Kane, this was what he needed, so he asked Ben to show it to him. Our hero explained that he wanted to make a magic circle and use the magic of the magic circle and create a magic tool. Hearing this, Ben was again surprised that the young man could do such a thing with the help of magic magic. Kane explained, thoughtfully at first, that this was indeed the case, not understanding what reaction his brother expected from him. And Ben explained that he was wondering what the limit was to how much he could surprise him. After all, Ben never stopped being surprised by what Kane told him, because with the help of the magic circle, any tools would be available to him. As expected from Ben, he had already realized the usefulness of the magic circle. Looking at his brother, Kane thought. He explained to Kane that there were restrictions. He could only conjure up to minus one level of magic magic. Activation requires ten times more magic power than the original. Now Ben understood about the tenfold magic power because it was quite a lot. Ben wondered how much magical power Kane had now and our hero decided that he would share this with Ben, since he was already his brother. But the young man was very embarrassed and, after a little hesitation, he explained that the amount of his magic was endless, to which Ben did not expect to hear such an answer. Then he just laughed and realized that Kane really did not stop surprising him. His reaction was incomprehensible to Kane, so Ben apologized, but he was very glad that the young man told him. After all, he won't tell anyone about it. Kane asked him not to really do that. Ben, looking closely at his brother, realized that Kane was growing faster than he thought and he should have been more careful with it. Now Ben suggested returning to the topic of magic that changes temperature refers to the second level of magic. Unfortunately, she is not of the same level as Kane realized. So temperature changing magic, level 1 magic, and I thought that probably Ben, as he checked what kind of magic it was, was trying to understand his brother. Ben said that magic is called the magic of life, for some reason it can be turned into a magic circle. There is no magic that can change the temperature. Ben explained that if you wanted to use the magic of life, there is hot water in the church. Anyone who teaches the magic of life can come and talk to his father, and next time he can learn. Our hero, of course, had no idea that such direct magic existed. Having come to the church with Alice, our hero now found himself there. He remembered how it had been a long time ago. When he talked to his father about the magic of life, his father, of course, immediately understood everything and that's how ordinary magic is in this world. Kane was the only one who didn't know about it, the young man thought to himself, realizing that everyone reacted calmly to this. Alice went with Kane and she was with him when he talked to his father. Lydia explained that he had to go and pack up with Alice before going to church. When they were sitting at breakfast, because the other day they had already taken measurements from the traveling clothes that they would wear on a trip to the estate of Count Sheetles. It looked like everything was ready, they just had to add the finishing touches. That day they went shopping together and our hero had to put on a lot of things 
and take them off, and he really didn't like such things. Right now, he needed to head ahead to the church to do what he had in mind. The bishop, seeing Mrs. Alice and Mr. Kane, greeted them in the church. The guys, of course, were also glad to meet. The bishop knew this and knew why they were here, so they had to go to the church and follow him. While our hero was following through the church, he saw Lady Guardia, the goddess who had previously communicated with him. But they were led further and then escorted to a certain circle, to which our hero had to go. He would use this tablet to learn the magic of life, which stood right in front of him. And the young men, together with Alice, looked in surprise at this beautiful object that stood in the middle of the church. Addressing our heroes, the priest asked what kind of magic of life the children would like to learn today, and especially Cain, who came to him. Cain said he would like to learn hot water, but would also like to learn other good magic, if any. Also, if possible, I would like to be told about the history of the magic of life. The bishop was ready to tell him about it briefly, because the magic of everyday life, as it is correctly called, was invented and spread by one hero in the past. It is said that the hero created this just out of one thought, that there must be magic that will make life much more convenient, even if a person does not have the skills of magic itself. When Cain heard that the hero had created the magic of life, he immediately noted it to himself. And the bishop went on to say that in the beginning only a hero could bestow the magic of life. There is even a story around the world that the hero escaped for a short time because too many people had to come to him. Therefore, he created this stone slab and was able to give the church the magic of life. Thus, the hero gave the opportunity to get paid for it. Kane was very glad that the bishop was talking about magic created by reincarnation from Japan a long time ago. She was still useful to people today, and it made him happy. And he was told that there are ten types of living magic created by the heroes, but only nine have survived to this day. And the bishop showed our hero the various kinds of living magic that were in front of him. The name of the magic was written on the paper, and next to it was its effect. So, our hero saw the light, and the effect of this magic is a fist-sized light. Then there was a puff, and warm air came out of his hand for 30 seconds. Cleaning followed, as a result of which the room accommodates about six tatami mats or one person up to the size of a bathtub, an ignition that creates a spark of fire for 10 seconds, cleaning that sterilizes food and beverages, cooling, which cools liquids to about minus 5 degrees Celsius, hot water, creates 500 cubes of boiling water, loudly emits a voice five times louder. A magnifying lens with 3x magnification appears in the area formed by a unique index and thumb. It was possible to check how much magic our hero could get by putting his hand on the tablet, and the bishop offered him a try. Of course, Cain immediately agreed, and he was led to the magic circle, offering to put his hands in the holes that were in front of him. The next moment, the circle began to glow. The number of times it glowed, namely four times, means that Mr. Kane can learn up to four varieties. Then our hero wanted to get hot water, light, and a magnifying glass. He decided that he would learn another one later, when he wanted to master other skills. The bishop agreed, and then he had to put his hands where he put them, explaining this to Kane, and began to dictate the spell. Our hero felt that something had changed, and after that, it now looks like the young man had successfully studied magic and he had to check his status on the board later. Our hero was surprised that everything happened so quickly. At that moment, Alice also wanted to study the magic of life, turning to the priest, and he agreed. Our hero thought about the fact that learning was very easy. He didn't even feel anything. Now our hero thought that he could use hot water to make baths. He immediately began to worry, thinking about what was waiting for him. Our hero was also happy for Alice, because she was able to learn how to clean and light. Alice was also very happy. If she could only learn one magic, she would have chosen something else, but she is glad that she was able to learn too. Our hero gave the money to the bishop and thanked them for today. The bishop had donations from their country in his hands, and the bishop also thanked the guys. While they were moving through the church, our hero, seeing the goddess Guardia, decided that he should worship her. Alice, seeing what our hero was doing, decided to follow his example and did the same. The guys bowed and said goodbye to the bishop. Now Alice explained that they had to go home because dinner was coming soon, and suddenly they heard someone calling for help. A woman was carrying a child and screaming. It was necessary to heal her brother's wound. She will definitely return the money later. At that moment, the girl was carrying a boy in her arms, who had a terrible wound on his leg. The person she was talking to apologized, but they asked everyone to pay on the spot. The young man explained to her that they would not be able to accept the payment later. The girl asked to make an exception, 
When the guys saw this, they realized that everything was very serious, but no one reacted to her words, and everything was understandable, because if an exception had been made for them, then others would have wanted the same thing. Unlike his previous life, there were no guarantees here. That's how this world was created. But still, our hero had healing magic, and he wanted to heal this boy. Alice, as if reading his mind, explained to Kane that he couldn't do it. If the young man cured him now, then people would come to him every day. He couldn't heal them all. Our hero understood this, but he wanted to help the boy. At that moment, he saw Alice's face and realized that it was difficult for her to leave everything like that. Everything was visible on her face. Our hero pretended that Alice's palm was also damaged, which means he will have to use a recovery spell. Therefore, turning to the priest, the young man asked if he could use restorative magic on Sister Alice. If he wants to use it on Alice Sama, then that's acceptable. At that moment, Alice was trying to prove to Cain that she wasn't hurt by freeing her palm from his hand. Our hero absolutely did not listen to her and led her into the light, closer to the place where the woman was standing with the wounded boy. Cain explained that he couldn't see anything, so he had to climb up to the sun. Our hero, finding a comfortable position and standing in front of a woman who was holding a crying child who was injured, Cain showed Alice how he can apply healing magic. The next moment, the boy's leg was also cured. Our hero pretended that the wound on Alice's arm had healed. And at that moment, our hero pretended that there was a woman and a child in the area of his magicians, and he screwed up. Therefore, the young man suggested that Alice go home as soon as possible, knowing that his magic had worked and he was still able to help the child. And today was a special day. The boy and mother bowed to our hero, who was leaving on a cart, and our heroes jumped on the cart and went home. Alice explained that, as always, he was coming up with something, but she told him that it was impossible to do it. And yet the girl was proud of her brother because he came up with such a clever way and still helped the child. Our hero asked not to tell his mother about this, otherwise he would give her one satsuma for a snack. Upon hearing this, Alice immediately agreed. Our hero, returning home, lay down on his bed and thought about how to build a bathhouse and what he would need to do first of all for this. After all, the young man was almost sure that he had been to the bathhouse before his reincarnation. And the young man began to remember exactly what was in the bathhouse. At first, when he went into it, he took off his slippers, then undressed in the locker room and went back to the sauna. Kane was tormented by questions about how to make a shower, whether a bathtub or a chair was needed. The soap was made at their place, everything was fine here. The young man did not know about the towels, and then he decided that next time he would make a sauna. Kane got his father's consent to build a bathhouse. They decided to make it near the back entrance to the mansion. Since brother Ben went hunting with his father, it was decided to build a bathhouse together with Hardy. Therefore, turning to Hardy, our hero decided to ask what size bathhouse he wanted. Later, the young man explained that if it was too small, it would be difficult to go inside, and if the bath came out too big, it would be difficult to keep it hot for a long time. Gardy, stopping his thinking process, explained that he did not even know what a sauna was. Now the young man realized that in this world magic was used for self-purification, so that some people did not even know what a bathhouse was, such as Gardy. Of course, there is no need to make a bath if there is magic. But this is a problem for people who do not know purification or who do not have the opportunity to donate to the church. Of course, cleansing was useful, but not everyone could do it. Cain recalled that when the maids put him and Alice to bed, they always suggested that they use cleansing before going to bed. The maids touched them with their hands and so, Mr. Cain and Alice were clean. Our hero thought that the magic of purification cleanses only the dirt on the surface of the body, but does not relieve fatigue inside. Cain wanted to soak in the tub and relax to relieve the fatigue of the day. That's why he wanted to build a bathhouse. Our hero decided to explain to Hardy what it was, and after his explanation, Hardy now knew what the bathhouse looked like and why it was. Hardy felt that then it should be large enough to accommodate three adults. And when the mistress goes there, the maids will also go and wash her. Our hero also thought about it, and at that moment Hardy imagined this situation, so he even felt embarrassed. Kane thought that then the bathhouse should be big enough for more than three adults. They needed a window, so Kane asked if Hardy could have made one somewhere. He didn't know about it, of course, but he decided that he would ask Master Randolph. Our hero agreed, if Hardy was ready to take on this case, and also involve the butler. But the young man thought to himself that in addition to the window, a roof was needed. Kane wondered if he should have imagined a stone wall with voids or if he would build a stone wall, and then remove its contents with magic, like last time. The young man needed to think about the order, otherwise he would not be able to make a bath. When our hero tried this before, he couldn't connect a stone wall on top of another wall. 
and it was necessary to think about everything before starting construction. And at that moment, Hardy brought Randolph and also Mrs. Noel, who was in the house. Noel, upon seeing Kane, was very glad to see him and explained her presence by saying that she had heard that they needed help. Our hero thought that Noel was very useful, and Randolph immediately decided to ask Mr. Kane which windows he was talking about. Kane explained that it was intended for ventilation, so it shouldn't have opened too wide. Next, our hero began to explain that the window should not have been visible from the outside. And, for example, if you move the bottom part from the inside out, as the young man explained, remembering how it looked. It was, of course, a laborious job, but tomorrow Randolph decided that he would already deliver the windows home. Our hero also wanted Randolph to bring several different sizes and formats. Of course Randolph couldn't disagree with our hero. He, in turn, turning to Noel, asked if she could help him with the construction of the bathhouse, because it would consist of a bathtub, a washing part and a locker room. The young men explained that the locker room should accommodate three adults, as well as have a room for storing additional hot water. Kane thought he could create space by hollowing out the walls, but it was difficult to make interior walls or a bathtub. At that moment, the young man clutched his head, realizing how much he had to do. After seeing how the boy was worried, Noel explained that not everything had to be created with magic. Noel explained that he should only do what could be done with magic, and other things could be taken over by the Guild of Masons or Carpenters, offering him such an option. Our hero and everyone else didn't even think about it. Glancing at each other, I decided that it could be so. That's exactly how difficult it was to do everything with magic. You just need to make walls and a bathtub with magic and the roof and the rest with ordinary construction. The young man was very glad that Noel helped him. Even in such a simple moment, the young man thanked her. Noel was also very happy to help them. Meanwhile, our hero decided to start creating everything except the roof. Using his magic, he created a stone wall, and then another one. Next, they had to make openings for doors and windows. Everyone, of course, admired how the young man could easily do it. Our hero, meanwhile, decided that first he needed to mash the magic in the right amount to make it small and divide it into several small pieces. So he used deletion and created openings for windows. Watching this, everyone praised our hero, because it looked just great. Noel, too, looking at how the young man made the room, was delighted with it. The next moment, Hardy asked Mr. Kane, looking at the ground, what would happen to the ground, whether they would lay it out with cobblestones. Our hero explained that they would make a low pavement, the stone floor in the bathroom would be slightly tilted to provide drainage. The young man invited them to watch, using his magic again he made a sloping cobblestone floor. Everyone was delighted with his efforts because Mr. Kane did everything perfectly. While our hero was looking at the bathhouse, he saw that everything had finally taken shape, but there were also several gaps watching the wall, the young man thought, and it also needed a little polishing. While he was thinking about it, Noel thought to himself that they had already saved a lot of time and effort on construction thanks to Mr. Kane and he already wants to go to the next stage. She couldn't help but wonder at this, thinking about how ambitious he was. Our hero, meanwhile, decided that next they had to move on to the bath, and using his magic again, he made a stone wall. Then I used the removal to make a recess in it, and so the tub was finally ready. After looking at the finished version, all three, including Noel, were surprised, trying to figure out what it was in front of them. Our hero has still touched up everything with clay, and now it remains only to fill it with hot water. Of course that was all that needed to be done. But at that moment, our hero, smiling happily, changed his face. The young man did not think about the plumbing at all. Looking at the boy's face, Noel thought that Mr. Kainov might have had some problems. Our hero had a really big problem. He didn't know what he needed to do with the plumbing. Kane had forgotten that he should have built all this closer to the well, and now he would have to think about the water pipe. And since the young man was talking out loud, Noel wondered what Kane meant when he said about the water pipe. Our hero had to tell us that it was the pipe through which the water flows. It was difficult to carry water back and forth every time they used the bathroom, so he decided to build a pipe so that water would flow from the well here, which would reduce the amount of work to carry water. But our hero understood that even if you make a pipe out of clay, it is likely to mix with the soil with prolonged use. Therefore, they all thought about it. But then, our hero decided to try something, because they could use a press for the earth. So it was necessary to put pressure on the surface of the earth to smooth and strengthen it. Kane thought that if the soil would harden like concrete with this, then it would be possible to continue working. Turning to the guys, he certainly needed their help again. Hardy, Randolph and Noel were ready to help him. So the young man told his father through Randolph that he was going to run water to the well, and to the bathhouse, and with his permission resumed work. 
but made several mistakes in the process of creation. But Noel, who decided to help them in some way, figured out how to make a slope and they got a straight maintenance department. Together they tried, it took them a long time, but they managed to put the plumbing in order and now everything was ready. All the guys exhaled heavily and were very glad that they were able to help our hero. They were all very tired. Now all that remains is to fill this tub with water. And our hero thought that was really all, because he would first like to fill the tub half. It wasn't an easy job either, so they had to try hard and they all took turns pumping water to fill half the tub. Later, our heroes got so tired that they decided to take a short break. Kane created simple chairs with magic, and so they decided to take a little break, because they had to figure out the best way to do this every day. Then they went back to work. As it seemed to them, everything was done. Our hero used hot water to add more boiling water and bring it to the desired temperature. Just at that moment, Randolph reported that the water had risen by half in the tub, and he was wondering what Mr. Kane was going to do next. In the meantime, everyone needed to take a look, because they were supposed to have hot water. By summoning her with magic, our hero was able to do this. It was the first time, because he had never used it before and it was very convenient. I was checking the water in the bathroom. Our hero thought that it was not at the right temperature and added more hot water. The hot water in the tub rises by about three quarters of the total mass and then stops. They did a great job, as it seemed to the young man. And after touching the water again, he noticed that the temperature was just right. Now Kane suggested that everyone else try to touch the water too. Looking at what our hero had created, Noel thought that this was the very bath. Hardy, it seemed that somehow it was very hot in the bathhouse. Our hero, watching their surprised faces, thought that perhaps this was a normal reaction when they saw the bathhouse for the first time. At that moment, Hardy and Noel lowered their hands to touch the water. It seemed to them that it was just right, not too hot and not too cold. Hardy even noticed that he could definitely soak in it for a long time. Then our hero offered to enjoy it for them. The guys decided to wet their feet in the bathroom, and Noel thought it was very pleasant, addressing Mr. Kane. The girl thanked him, because she had no idea how it warms her feet. Hardy believed that it quickly relieves fatigue. Our hero was very glad that they liked it, looking at the admiring faces and laughing Hardy and Noel. Kane was sure that the girl would be happy to take such a bath. But then, our hero realized that he had completely not thought about the whole system to the end and had not thought about drainage. At that moment, everyone saw our hero droop again and thought that something must have happened. Our hero apologized to everyone again and asked for help with drainage. To which the guys, seeing the young man apologizing, asked him not to apologize because they would try hard to finish everything and make everything work the way our hero imagined it. When they finished, the sun had already set and dusk was gathering. Using the drainage system, everything was finally ready. Our hero was so tired that he really wanted to take a bath, but it was so hard for him to even go there. At that moment, it seemed to him that the world was so perfect, he decided that no matter what it took, he would take a hot bath tomorrow. Addressing the guys, our hero suggested that they also come here tomorrow and take a bath together. Hardy was also pleased and thanked Mr. Kane for the offer. Noel decided that was enough for today and she would go home. Randolph thought that Mr. Kane also needed to have dinner, so they all finished today's work together. When our hero came to dinner at the manor, he looked at how quiet everyone was, and especially Arthur and Chris. The guys were so sad and it was incredible that the brothers could handle so much paperwork, as Kane realized and how hard it could be for the Lord. Lydia noticed how Arthur and Chris drooped, explained that they needed to collect their thoughts, because Arthur still had a small amount of work today. And Chris, when he got a girlfriend, he had to take the initiative. She couldn't understand what was wrong with him, because they were so exhausted. Lydia offered the guys to look at Alice. The girl was full of energy and our hero was very surprised how Alice does not get tired of studying. At this moment, the girl who had eaten all her food was smiling at her brothers, showing them an example. Chris at that moment was only thinking about the fact that he had to go around 10 stores in one day without a break and it was just terrible. Our hero then guessed that it looked like Chris was on a tour of the estate and would need to take a bath soon so that they could all rest. The next morning, everyone else greeted Mr. Kane. Noel explained that before Kane there were craftsmen from the Guild of Masons and the Guild of Carpenters. Our hero was very glad that they would help him build a bathtub. He also wanted them to make a roof, a door and a window in this bathhouse that was in front of them. He also needed them to fix the tub inside. The guys looked at everything our hero wanted to do, shook their heads thoughtfully. Kane asked how soon they would be able to do all this, and the Masons explained that they would most likely be able to do it before dark. Upon hearing this answer, he was very pleased with our hero, and he was waiting for it all to end. 
Then the merchants brought the wood and plaster and so they got to work. The workers turned to him more than once and each time our hero gave them instructions. By lunchtime, the roof frame was finally ready and it was exciting for the young man to watch this bathhouse take shape. While he was enjoying this view, one of the main employees came up to him. He had to ask Mr. Kane. The young man decided that they had probably found something missing or poorly installed. But the man explained that this was not the case because few craftsmen could have built such a room with such a solid foundation. He had to say that it was a little chilly in this bathroom, and so he suggested making a stove in the locker room, believing that it would help. When our hero heard about the stove, he looked at the bricklayer in surprise and did not even suspect that they had it. After all, he had not seen any yet, which means that the stove really exists in this world, and it sounded perfect. It was hard to take a bath in a cool room. The young man asked if they could install an additional furnace and the bricklayer said that it could be. They will prepare it as soon as possible, he reported to Kane. Kane wondered how much it would cost and whether it would be expensive to install such an oven. And if it was very expensive, they should have told him what it looked like and he would make it. But the masons explained that the payment for the stove would be enough, in return they asked to build a fence around it. And the young man agreed, using a stone wall. He was able to do it very quickly. After watching how our hero works, of course the chief mason heard many stories about him. But the young man continued to surprise, addressing Mr. Kane, the mason commented. After that, our hero made plaster with the help of magic, added chairs and the baths themselves for bathrooms. Everyone watching him was surprised that you can only do everything at once. So everyone worked very hard until lunch. After lunch, work resumed, and the roof was finished when the sun began to set. And after finishing all the finishing touches, everything was finally ready. After looking at their efforts, everyone was glad how the stove had changed along with what the bricklayers had done. Everyone also congratulated Mr. Kane because Noel thought the magic of the earth was just amazing. Our hero did not understand why they were talking only about his magic, because everything was thanks to their help. He was very grateful to them for this, because they got the best bathhouse. Our hero was so polite and always smiled at everyone, that everyone loved Mr. Kane very much and reciprocated him. After work, he prepared for today's hike. The young man laid out a towel, top quality soap, clothes, and other things necessary for the bath. He also installed several lamps using the living magic of light, and at the same time, explained to the maids how to use the bathroom. The maids, as befits the staff, recorded everything exactly as our hero said in order to follow his instructions. After that, he returned back to the manor where Lydia met him. The maids told her about the bathhouse and it was amazing how she thought that the young man could build such a beautiful thing, and that so many wonderful people helped him. She said that Randolph said that everything worked out only thanks to the guidance and magic of Kane. She thought it was just wonderful, and our hero, hearing this, believed that everything was not quite right, it was all thanks to everyone's help. Lydia asked if he didn't mind if she joined the trip to the sauna, and of course our hero didn't mind. Alice wanted to go there too, after hearing that his sister Alice also wanted to, our hero agreed. The girls suggested that the three of them go there. At first, Kane agreed, but then, looking at them in embarrassment, he did not understand what they were talking about. Before that, our hero saw how his brothers caught all the white-tailed gulls and there were about 15 of them in total, as Ben noticed. They also caught a wild boar, the father said. Lydia couldn't wait for them to cook it for their New Year's Eve party. The party would be much more lively this year, next to his brothers, Kane thought. Back in this world, he should have turned seven years old. And after they distributed their catch, the young man showed them the bathhouse. The whole family went with him. When they entered the bathhouse, Arthur had never even seen anything like it. Arthur thought it was just amazing. Chris, who also examined the building, added that they do not even have such facilities in the capital. Looking at the bathtub in front of them, Arthur realized that this was the bathroom Kane had mentioned. It was very big, so it could accommodate them all. Ben, at that moment, thoughtfully looking at all this, realized that of course Kane was telling everything. He built the whole building, but this is beyond the power of a six-year-old child. While Ben stood thoughtfully aside, Alice looked at all this decoration. The chairs and bathroom that were in front of everyone, our hero made of simple clay. But he wanted the wood craftsman to do it later, because the clay was a little heavy. Alice was looking at the washing buckets at that moment. Our hero was going to install a milk container or something like that. But he did not succeed all at once. At that moment, he remembered Lydia explaining that it was not good to drink in the bathtub. And even naked. That's exactly what he was told but he wouldn't mind imagining himself drinking milk in this bathroom. Our young man thought about who should have taken a bath first, and it seemed to him that his father, as the head of the family, should have done it. 
but his father, as if reading his mind, believed that Lydia should have been the first. All the guys were surprised when they heard this. Lydia was very glad that her husband had given in. Her father thought she was waiting for this more than anyone. Our hero was very happy. Looking at his father, he realized that he was very kind to his wife. Lydia agreed and then Alice, Kane she will follow them. Our hero knew it, so all three of them wrapped in a towel, they had to go to the bathroom. Before that, Chris also noted that he liked the local locker rooms, they are warm and there is also a stove. There is also a basket so as not to confuse your clothes with someone else's. It was very convenient for everyone. When they changed clothes, Alice boasted that she undressed first. Our hero thought that she really resolutely took up her clothes, but he decided that it was better to keep silent, because he remembered and heard how Alice first began to take off her clothes without untying her hair at all. After that, our heroes went to the bathroom. When they went into the bathhouse, the first thing they had to do was pour themselves hot water, use it in a tub to scoop up hot water. First, slowly pour it on his feet, then pour hot water over his whole body, and our hero, demonstrating this, asked the girls to repeat after him, which they did. After which Alice screamed that it was very hot. But our hero explained that if she immediately pours everything on herself, the body reacts accordingly. Alice was unhappy that our hero had not told her about this earlier, to which our hero immediately justified that he had warned her and asked the girl not to be angry. After finishing his punctuation, our hero explained that now they could wash their hair. Pointing to the soap after they poured some water on their hair, they had to lather them with soap. This way it foams easier if you let in air, use foam to rub your hair well. While he was showing it, Alice was looking at her brother admiringly. After that, the young man explained that it was necessary to wash off the foam. Lydia was watching him closely and saw that the young man did not have enough foam from behind. She decided to wash his hair. At first he was a little confused, but then he felt his mother's hands. They were very gentle and pleasant, and Kane felt very calm about it. Here, interrupting his calmness, Alice called him, offered to see what horns she had made herself out of foam. Our hero saw the horns on Alice's head and thought it was amazing. She had such big ones, she looked like a dragon. Well, our hero, as usual, guessed incorrectly, and Alice resentfully explained that they were rabbit ears. Our hero knew, of course, that she had a unique sense of beauty, but he did not understand at all what kind of rabbit ears were in question. So while they were all washing up, mom decided to wash her hair too. The guys all laughed at her fluffy head when Lydia showed how she did it. The girls eventually had problems with long hair, of course, their hair used to be washed by maids. But mother said that she wanted to try it herself today with the help of our hero, so they decided to do everything themselves without resorting to the help of maids. After all, there is nothing better than washing with your family. Next, it was necessary to wash the body and at that moment Lydia realized that she could not reach her back. Then Alice came to her rescue, and the girl thanked her, and Kane was supposed to wash Alice's back. Our hero thought that it was the same family back massage. He always wanted to do this in his previous life, but he never got the chance. He had never thought that he would be able to experience something like this in another world. He felt divine. At that moment, Alice realized that Kane must have liked it so much that he was washing her. Then she decided that she would wash him even more thoroughly, after which all our heroes got into the tub. It was very pleasant to soak in the hot water, as Lydia noticed. It relieved fatigue and it was also nice to stretch your legs, Alice noticed. Our hero thought that it was impossible to experience such a pleasant pastime with the help of magic. And it's good that they built a bathhouse after all. After leaving the bathhouse, Lydia apologized to her husband for making him wait a long time. To which the father believed that they had not been together for long and he was wondering how everything went. Lydia immediately said that it turned out to be much better than she expected. Her hair and body were cleaner and fresher than usual. Alice said that they also washed each other's backs, and Chris thought it sounded funny. Then Ben wondered how they did it and our heroes shared it with them, after which Luke decided that they were going to have fun in the bathhouse too, and the guys wished them good luck. Watching this, our hero thought that his brothers got along well with each other. He was sure they would enjoy washing each other's backs. Benjamin started first and helped Chris, but Chris didn't really like the way Benjamin washed him. It seemed to him that his brother was washing him too much and peeling off his skin. But it seemed to Ben that she just didn't have enough training, and then he suggested that his brother rub her with ice. Chris didn't understand why he couldn't admit he was wrong. While the guys were fighting, Arthur was thinking that this situation meant that his father would have to wash his back, and he was very worried about this. Then Luke asked Arthur not to be shy. It was fun to wash the backs of his adult sons. At that moment, his father noticed that Arthur had become very strong and he was proud of him. 
Luke asked me to take care of their lambs. Of course, Arthur decided to do this so as not to let his father down. The dish they had for dinner was delicious. Kane dreamed about it as he walked into the room. The crispy skin seasoned with salt from the chicken. After a relaxing bath, in addition, I ate delicious food, and the bath was a success, so our hero was extremely happy. Here he was distracted by the maids, turning to Mr. Kane. They asked if the young man was sure that they could also use the bathhouse. Surprised, Kane explained that they could, of course, also do this, because there would also be a test for the future distribution of baths in the territory, so they had to feel free to use them. Our hero also, in turn, wanted them to report everything that he noticed when using them. The maids were so inspired that they agreed to any request of our hero, and the young man hoped that they would like it. After all, they all looked so happy, and then suddenly Lara appeared, it was also a maid and she scared our hero a little. She also thanked him for his excellent work. She had heard that he had prepared another great dish. Our hero was in his thoughts at that moment, thinking that this maid always approached him unexpectedly. The maid did not notice this at all and decided to ask him the questions that interested her. The girl asked if our hero went shopping tomorrow, because Master Randolph asked her to accompany the gentleman. Our hero reported that this was indeed the case. Tomorrow he goes to buy what he has wanted for a long time and the butler knew that Lara knew about it, so she had to show him what our hero needed and Kane added that he had heard that Lara knew a lot about the Chamber of Commerce and Guilds. And Lara said that this was indeed the case, because they had helped her a lot in the past, so she had been there often. Our hero did not understand in what way they were helping the girl. The same one sarcastically said that she would look forward to tomorrow. When our hero came to the store with Lara, he saw how lively it was, and the young man immediately liked it there. Then he heard a woman asking to put this product in the next area, and the guys were trying to figure out what they had to do with it. The girl willingly led the process. At this moment Lara turned to this very Monica, so that the girl would give them a minute. Seeing that it was Lara, Monica thought that today was not the day of delivery and hoped that Lara did not have bad news for her. Lara assured her friend that she didn't have to worry, on the contrary, she had good news, pointing with a glance at Kane, who was standing behind her. She showed our hero and the girl now realized that the young man wanted to buy something in their shop. Our hero was standing at that moment and looking at the girl in front of him. He already knew that her name was Monica, and Monica curtsied and said that it was a great honor for her to welcome him to the Pedro Chamber of Commerce today. Our hero thanked us for such a warm welcome. He was also delighted to meet her, and the girl, smiling at him, thanked him for his kindness, because they are always happy to see him here, addressing him as Mr. Cobblestone. Our hero, having heard that he was called Mr. Cobblestone, did not understand why this was so, and he, turning to Lara, was trying to find out if Lara knew why the girl turned to him. Lara was surprised that this was the first time Kane had heard about it, but that's what people in the city called him. Since then, the nickname has stuck with him. Upon hearing this, our hero, of course, was surprised. After all, he had never heard of it before. All the girls were excited that the young man had just found out about his new nickname. Our hero apologized for disturbing us at such a busy time. But Lara explained that he could find what he needed at Pedro's Chamber of Commerce. Upon hearing this, the girl noticed that Pedro's Chamber of Commerce would do everything possible to provide him with what he wanted, turning to Mr. Kane. And they were wondering what he was looking for. Our hero told us that he needed oil from the plant and some small black seeds, and also asked if they had bird eggs. The oil from the plants, it was the oil they bought the other day, which was made from beans, as far as she believed and they needed to look at their small black seeds and eggs. The girl asked, if it was possible, what all the things our hero needed were for. She couldn't even imagine such a thing. Our hero explained that he wanted to make sweets for his sister Alice. Our hero thought to himself that this was his apology for the fact that last time he had a snack on baked potatoes without his sister. Meanwhile, Monica went to look for ingredients for sweets, and asked the young man to wait a bit. After which she returned with all the ingredients he needed. Our hero was very happy, because he had everything he needed in front of him. But the girl explained that this was the least that could not be done for Mr. Kane and they can deliver these things to his mansion. Of course, our hero, mentally, had already half abandoned the idea of getting everything from Lara, as it seemed to him, to her connections with a large chamber of commerce. Of course, it was only beneficial to him. Therefore, he thanked Monica for giving him all this so cordially. The girl would be glad if our hero returned to them again for shopping. Then they went to the city. Our hero wanted to buy a magic stone but he didn't know where to buy it. Lara thought about how strange the young man's requests were, but if he wanted to get something like this, he should contact the Adventurer's Guild. When our hero heard the phrase about the Adventurer's Guild, he thought that it was the one. 
He was wondering if she was the same as in the games. They came to a guild where there were many adventurers, and now Kane realized that this was the same adventurer guild that he had seen so much about in the games. Kane wondered if he could go and buy it himself, because that was his business. He couldn't contain his curiosity in any way. But at that moment, Lara explained that there was no way the young man could have done it himself. When our hero heard this, all his passion disappeared and Lara explained that who would protect Mr. Kane if he went there himself. If he gets hurt, she will be scolded by Master Randolph. Our hero believed that Lara was more afraid that Randolph would get angry at her than he would get hurt. To which Lara, hearing this, only opened her mouth in surprise, but the young man understood her. Randolph's expression doesn't change, but when he was angry, he was really very scary. After all, Randolph always looked stern when he said that if he played in this place, he would definitely die. That's how he imagined Randolph, who was very angry. Lara started screaming that it was true, because the master was very scary, but he cares about his well-being. Our hero at that moment thought that Lara was very strange. Lara explained that Mr. Kane was a nobleman and he should not have the desire to do dangerous things on his own. Our hero, upon hearing this, realized that his mother had told him the same thing. At that moment, they both started laughing. Our hero has come up with something. The young man suggested that Lara go ahead of him and take a look at the wall. If he was in danger, she would have to help. After a little thought, Lara decided that she could agree to this. And our hero thought that if something happened, he would come running. Then he decided it was time for him to come in. Opening the door, our hero saw adventurers standing near the bulletin board, looking at them. He also saw adventurers drinking their drinks. Looking around, the young man happily thought that he had finally got into the guild. Then the girl at the reception greeted him, thinking that he probably wanted to leave a request. Our hero saw an elf in front of him for the first time, which he was very surprised by. The girl only looked questioningly at the surprised face of our hero. The young man explained that, of course, he did not want to leave a request. He would like to buy magic stones and just look around. The girl told him about the magic stones. At that moment, he was grabbed by one of the adventurers, and our hero realized that he could get into trouble. Here, several adventurers reported that they had just returned to the mission and were tired. After looking at them, Elf realized that she had to act quickly. Apologizing to our hero, she dealt with the guys who came in the door, throwing their daggers at them. The men were outraged by this action. But at that moment, Lara's knife was already presented near their throats, and the girl was trying to figure out who these guys thought they were. Lara explained that in front of them was the fourth son of their lord, Cain St. Rose, and was the man in front of her ready to give his life for the son of a nobleman. In an instant, she was behind him. Lara was very fast and she looked so stern that our hero couldn't believe it. And her eyes were just murderous, he thought that he should have left it all to her. Our hero decided to apologize anyway, because it was his fault that he came here so suddenly, so making a nice face. He asked to let this scoundrel go. Lara, seeing this face that our hero made, was a little confused and then exhaled heavily. After all, there was nothing else for her to do. If Mr. Kane said so, then she could only do it. Addressing the man in front of her, the girl explained that he should have been grateful because Mr. Kane had given him his generous forgiveness. Lara screamed at the guys to get out of here and they ran away from her. Meanwhile, Lara, along with our hero, watched them go. And it looks like Lara said earlier that he was coming here. And Lara explained that of course it was so. Today her task is to eliminate any danger to Mr. Kane. Our hero apologized for the trouble he caused by addressing Mrs. Rash, who was standing right in front of him. He caused trouble because of his curiosity. The girl asked him not to apologize because they behaved rudely. She thought it would be a good beating that would benefit them, so she asked the young man not to worry about it. Now they had to talk about the magic stone. Our hero could look at them in the place where she was pointing. And after buying magic stones, our hero and Lara returned from the guild. Lara was very glad that our hero got the magic stone he wanted, and the young man, of course, was also happy about it. Then our hero decided to ask Lara what position Rashi San holds in the Guild of Adventurers. It seems she was very experienced. Lara noticed that Mr. Kane was well informed. Rashi's leader is a former a rank adventurer and a veteran receptionist, Lara explained to our hero. In a sense, the girl has more power than the head of the guild, the maid noticed. Our hero, of course, understood this and decided that he should have been careless. The next moment, turning to Lara, the girl listened attentively to him, and our hero was wondering who she was. To which Lara, laughing, explained that she was just a maid. Our hero decided to believe her. At first, he was a little afraid of her, but today he learned something. The young man was so excited in an adventurous way when he was with her, and it was a lot of fun. 
Hearing this, Lara was very confused and our hero did not understand why she was making such a face. The girl explained that he was just scared, because it was confusing. Our hero, holding out his hand to Lara, offered to continue to be friends. The girl, seeing that the young man was smiling and holding out his hand to her, agreed with him. So they shook hands and headed for the manor. Our hero suggested cooking something sweet when they get home. Of course, Lara was looking forward to it. Kane was going to do more and asked Lara to give sweets to Monica and Rush. Of course Lara could not refuse our hero, agreed with him. The young man also noticed that he would prepare sweets for her. Lara was extremely glad that she would also get to try what the master was doing. As we approach the end of the year, a significant cold snap has set in in the St. Rose region. The remaining small undergrowth turned white. The castle was in chaos at that moment. Our hero, looking into the kitchen, saw how the chefs were trying to cook all the white meat, ribs and mayonnaise. Preparations for the New Year's dinner were in full swing, as our hero could see, watching from behind the kitchen door. He came to check on the kitchen and it looked like a battlefield. The demons for the meat dishes lay to one side, and they were all caught by father and brother. After looking at it, our hero thought about how great it was. Then someone spoke to Mr. Randolph, and Cook Lloyd came out. He asked to clarify how many barrels of wine they had prepared for tonight. It seemed to him that he must have been there around three, to which the butler explained that there could not be so many of them. But the gentleman had prepared two barrels of wine, so you could try it. Then they saw Mr. Kane and Lloyd asked how he could help our hero. To which the young man explained that he wanted to know about the preparation of ingredients for his new recipe. Upon hearing this, Lloyd explained that in order for our hero not to worry, he had prepared everything he needed. Our hero was very happy. After all, he had prepared a new recipe from his previous life, and he was very grateful to the chefs for helping him. At this moment, they were looking at the ingredients that the young man had bought earlier, and our hero was going to cook two sweets today. These are sweets for Alice's sister. He thought she might like it. The first sweet is a large potato, and the second is a casella. After hearing the name, all the chefs thought that these were probably recipes from the Book of Heroes too. Kane said that this was indeed the case. At first, it was possible to make them as soon as possible, because they had little time. For large potatoes, it was necessary to wash the satsuma, cut it into long thin strips 10 centimeters long and 5 millimeters square, then fry in oil until golden brown. Deep fried potatoes in oil and seasoned with honey, sprinkled with sauce, sprinkled with sesame seeds bought in the store. For casella, 10 eggs are enchanted with a cleansing spell. Then it is mixed with flour, honey and a small amount of oil. It was necessary to put it in a deep iron pan and put it in the oven, and bake with a lid closed when ready. After that, everything was ready and it smelled amazing. When all the chefs tried what our hero came up with, they were delighted with how delicious it was. They liked the crispy texture and the sesame seeds, they had a very pleasant aroma, and it was just an incredible fluffy, sweet food. Our hero thought that his sister Alice would like it too, and he was even interested. Luke thanked everyone for their diligent preparation. He was glad that they could have such a New Year's holiday together. He hoped that today everyone would eat and drink to the brim, addressing his entire family and all his servants, raising a glass to their health. Everyone followed his example and also raised a glass, and then began to eat and drink. Everything looked so delicious that our hero didn't even know what to take and where to sit. Then Alice called him, offering Kane to sit next to her. She also wanted to thank him about the cakes, because she understood that this was the recipe that he probably talked about earlier, and she really liked it. Our hero knew she would like it. The young man was glad, he apologized for eating sweet potatoes without her. But there was nothing to be done, Alice said, and she forgave him, so she offered to bring more sweet cakes. Our hero, of course, would have been very happy to help her, but Alice had to see for herself. There was such a rich table here, and it would be strange to eat only one sweet. Alice decided that she could really enjoy the other dishes. Then our hero was called. Kane saw that there was a casserole next to him, and in front of it sat Mother Lydia, who also loved this big casserole very much. She really liked it because she had heard that it was his new recipe and it was amazing. She thought that even more merchants would come to their territories to eat like this. Addressing his mother and Kane, he did not even know that they were here. Arthur sat down next to them. He worked without interruption for several days and realized that it was damn tedious, so he suggested reducing the flow of applications, to which Lydia did not understand what he was talking about, because there are usually one and a half times more of them than there are. And thanks to Kane, the situation improves a little. 
but I couldn't afford to overwork so much. Next time, I had to hire a couple of assistants, otherwise they would lose their pace. Our hero thought it was just the harsh realities they were facing now, talking about the papers. Our happy hero, leaving Arthur with Lydia, ran to get food. At that moment, the guys were all drinking cold drinks with Ben's help. But our hero, seeing this, did not understand what his brother was doing and asked about it. Ben explained to Kane that the ale was too warm and he was cooling it with magic. It was very popular and he even liked it. But Kane was not allowed yet. Of course, our hero was still too young, but he loved this business so much in his previous life. And the young man was very upset that they were all drinking, but he couldn't do it. But after looking at my happy family, who were having fun, it was nice to celebrate the new year with them. The young man hoped that next year they would be able to spend time like this again. When dawn came, our hero woke up and did his daily jog. It was still cold in the morning, winter had come. But our hero had a run every day and it was a great way to start the new year on a good note. So he did not forget to pray to Guardia and thanked her for protecting her last year. Therefore, he asked to protect his entire family and all the people in his possessions and in the new one. Our hero has decided that he will try his best this new year. Merchants of the patrimony come to congratulate their father on the new year. It was such a rarity, as the young man believed. In another world, even on New Year's Eve, everything happens as usual. And when the world returned to normal, he decided to show everyone a couple of things. Just on this day, our hero called everyone to the bathhouse. Randolph, with the maids following him, did not expect that they would be called there. But our hero explained that he had something that he wanted them to take advantage of. And the next moment our hero showed them a lantern. After seeing it, the girls did not understand what it was. Then our hero suggested saying the word light. The maid, hearing that she had to do this, explained to the young man that she did not have light magic. But our hero reported that everything was fine, she didn't need magic for this, so she just had to say the word. The next moment, when the maid said this, the lantern began to glow. When she saw that the lantern lit up, the girl looked at it in surprise, not understanding how it happened. Our hero explained that with the help of a tool, you can also create magic. Just say the words and you could also say hot water. When the girl uttered the words about hot water, the water immediately, as if by magic, began to flow. The girls were so surprised, because they didn't even own this magic, but it worked. The butler believed that Kane had done something amazing again and everyone was wondering if Mr. Kane himself had done it all. The tool in front of him is made by investing magical power in a magic stone. He just bought a magic stone the other day and anyone who touches it can use magic. Brother Ben was just teaching our hero magic engraving before a dinner party and the young man did it by applying this magic. Of course, it was difficult for him to explain this to the maids and he simply explained that he had made it with his brother Ben. The maids were happy because as expected, both brothers were talented. Ben only taught him magic and he did. Our hero was glad that now everyone could use the bathroom. Looking at people, he liked that people's lives were so simplified. One day, a carriage arrived. She was so beautiful that everyone froze in amazement when they saw her. Chris thought that they probably wouldn't take it to grandpa's. And the whole point was because he was going to fulfill a request that he received in his grandfather's domain. Kane thought. The young man was afraid that he would not be home for two weeks. Chris didn't even know they had such a carriage at home. Arthur didn't understand what his brother was talking about then. They just borrowed it for such an important event. They are not rich enough to buy additional carriages yet. Chris was scared that their house was so close to collapse. But Arthur explained that there was nothing they could do about it now. But if they don't take even small actions, they won't get out of this situation. Now that Arthur was helping his father with his work, he understood this better. His father and mother were not idle. They were taking various measures. But the results would be visible only in a few years, as he believed. Chris should have known that, being a family member. Addressing Arthur, Chris explained that after graduating from the academy, he would serve in the army for several years. And he wanted to return to the house of St. Rose and start a family. So he asked them to make sure that they got rich by this time. Arthur shouted that Chris should have tried and helped too, not understanding why he was so selfish. Meanwhile, Ben was giving Laura the flashlights and beads she had asked for, explaining that they would be activated in two seconds with magic. And they were a little stronger than normal ones, so she had to be more careful. Laura thanked Ben. She hoped she would use the technology if anything happened. She will protect everyone. Ben was counting on her, as was the whole family. Hardy, who was escorting Mr. Kane, asked him to be careful on the road, and our hero thanked Hardy for these kind words. While they were asked to proceed to the carriage, Luke asked everyone to take care of themselves. All the brothers waved to our hero and Alice along with Lydia, 
who were going to go with him. Our hero jumped into the carriage and thought that this was his first trip to another world. He was told that they would make stops along the way. The young man was wondering what awaits him, thinking about the cities and villages of this world. After all, he was going to absorb what he saw, do something even greater for his land. A truly unknown world, a world he had seen for the first time, would surely be full of new knowledge. So our heroes went on a trip, and of course the carriage was shaking very much. It was amazing how you can read a book without worrying about pitching. Looking at Lydia, Kane thought. After all, he was very uncomfortable and it was not only about the carriage itself, but also about the roads. They are so bad that the carriage was rocking. If the roads were improved, the pitching would decrease and the speed would increase. And our hero decided that it was time to check the condition of the road. But the mother forbade our hero to get out of the carriage during the rest, because if he stood on the platform for a long time in the cold season, without any warm clothes, he would immediately catch a cold and she did not allow him to do so. Our hero was very upset. Then Lara came up, wanted to address Miss Lydia, to monitor the condition of the roads. She offered a view from the back seat of a closed carriage. It is much warmer there than on a regular platform. In addition, they could wrap themselves in a camping blanket. Lydia looked at our hero who made a sweet face begging his mother to let him. She agreed, because then they would definitely not catch cold with Lara's proposal. But only she explained that it would be until the next stop. Our hero and Lara rejoiced. He was very grateful that she allowed it. When they got there, our hero saw a lot of luggage about with Lara and thought that two people could barely fit here, so he apologized for this selfishness. Lara was just telling Mr. Kane not to worry about it, because she was just happy to spend time with him, and offered to go to the back, she would help him just get there. Our hero climbed up and tried to figure out how Lara would climb here, because it was quite high here. But the girl asked him not to worry, and a second later she jumped into the place where our hero was sitting. Then we could sit down together and admire the road. Our hero thought about the fact that Lara jumped very high in an instant. She probably had a wonderful physical shape. It was also very cold in this compartment and our heroes covered themselves with a blanket. Lara hugged the young man from behind, covering him with a blanket and felt how she pressed him, trying to understand what Lara was doing. Our hero returned to her. Laura explained that Mr. Kane was very nice. She was trying to keep him warm so he wouldn't catch a cold. Our hero was even embarrassed that she said he was cute. Then the carriage started to go and Laura had to make sure that our hero warmed up. But he was worried and looked at the road. But because Laura hugged him so hard, the young man could not concentrate in any way. So they drove all the way to the city. Finally arriving, Lydia saw the village of Tonga where they would stay. Then the locals turned to them. They were very grateful that Lady Lydia came here today and the man introduced himself as Benon, the village headman. He hoped they would feel at home in their wilderness. Everyone was carefully examining the lady and her children. They had never seen her before. Our hero noticed how excited everyone in the village looked. At that moment Lydia was looking forward to the opportunity to get to know everyone, telling the citizens she was very glad that they accepted them. The girl was smiling so much that they were all delighted with her smile. The headman decided to take them to the inns and asked them to follow them. Our hero saw how Lydia instantly relieved the tension from the villagers and Mother Lydia just smiled wonderfully, as the young man noticed. They came into the room and it was very spacious in this room. They weren't supposed to stay in it today. It was the largest room for two people. The beds were soft, airy, and jumping on them, Kane thought. At that moment, Laura distracted him. She apologized for disturbing his peace, but the lady instructed her to accompany Kane on his walk through the village. The young man was surprised that they had just arrived, and he could already explore the village. Laura simply believed that the young man was probably bored with today's carriage ride. She hoped he wasn't too tired. Our hero was fine and offered to go. The main industry of the village of Tonga is agriculture, as in the settlements. But since the village is on the road, merchants and travelers often come here, so there are many shops. There are inns and inns. Looking at the city, our hero decided that the photo in the tavern would certainly be possible to drink. But he understood that he was not allowed and therefore decided to just go to the main store to see what they sell here. There were so many things here and there was even an axle for the carriage. The seller, seeing the interested young man, asked Mr. Kane not to hurry with the inspection. Here our hero saw unusual objects, tried to figure out what it was. Then the manager explained that he had brought these goods about two years ago. It smells sweet but has no taste. Therefore, he did not know how to use it. The manager liked the smell and bought it, but he couldn't sell it all. Our hero looked thoughtfully at these sprouts and realized that it was vanilla. It could be useful for cooking new dishes. And the young man was able to buy it for one silver coin. 
because the manager decided not to sell it for two, because it was not sold in any way. Our hero was grateful that he gave him a discount. After buying vanilla, they left the store and when they left, Lara wondered what Mr. Kane had bought in the store for a strange sprout. The young man said that it was a kind of spice, it can be used for various dishes. When Lara heard that they were going to have new pastries, she was happy, but then suddenly they heard that someone was quarreling. The boy wanted to ask the guys if he could get the money now. Next to him stood a creature similar to a cow, which our hero drew attention to. The men explained that it was not customary for them to give money first and then do the work. They couldn't have known that he wouldn't take the money and run away. Our hero looked carefully at how the guy proved that he would not do this, but the man did not trust the tramps in any way, and a quarrel broke out between them. Our heroes on the sidelines were watching this closely. The young man who approached the men explained that his sister had a fever and he needed money to buy medicine and food. But they all didn't care, because he said that he would plow the field by tomorrow and they even found a place for him to sleep. They couldn't pay him if he hadn't even done half the work. The young man tried to explain that he would have done it if his sister had been there. The guys realized that the young man himself admitted that he was not going to do anything. After hearing them swear, our hero could not stay away and approach them. He heard the young man's story and became curious, but in fact he was more interested in the beast cattle, so he decided to come here. Turning to the men, he asked and asked them to tell him the whole story that had happened. Briefly, he was told that this boy in front of him and his sister were tamers using cow monsters. They go to farming villages and earn their living by plowing fields. The guys arrived in this village about three days ago and were supposed to plow the field until tomorrow, but the boy's sister got sick and he came to negotiate the payment. After hearing the whole story, our hero decided that he was plowing the field for him, in which case they had to pay him. When the men heard this, they thought that it probably wasn't right. Our hero insisted, and they brought him to the field, which was quite large. It seemed to them that this was a lot for one of our heroes. The field was the size of three basketball courts. But the young man was ready to do it, and using the magic of the earth, he used his digging. After looking at this, the man did not understand what was going on. A field of this size was plowed in an instant. Laura encouraged Mr. Kane, because he was just great. The guys thought that maybe Kane was a great magician. Our hero said that he was just an ordinary earth magician and the guys did not understand what was ordinary about it. After watching how he did it in an instant, our hero asked to pay the boy's salary as they promised. They gave the money to the young man and believed that he should have thanked Mr. Kane. Now was the time for our hero to introduce himself and turning to the young man, he introduced himself as Kane, the fourth son of the St. Rose family. The young man standing in front of him introduced himself simply as Tony. Addressing Cain, he said that he was a master of demons. Cain thought he was younger than him, so the young man could talk to him as usual. The young man thanked Mr. Cain. At that moment, he saw how angry Lara was. There was a bull cow in front of Cain and Tony introduced her as Hanako. Then our hero asked him for a favor. Hearing this, the young man thought that even the nobles could not give up Hanok. Our hero assured that this was not the case. He was just wondering if Hanako was giving milk or not. When he heard about the milk, the young man explained that she gave milk, but he did not recommend drinking it. Cow bull milk made normal people sick when they drank it, although he squeezed it out. Our hero explained that he had magic and asked Lara to hold the milk. Meanwhile he took out a magic stone filled with magical power and used purification on the milk. Now Lara was not supposed to get sick and our hero offered her a try. Lara was a little afraid, but agreed with this and when she tasted the milk, she thought it had an unusual taste, but it was not bad at all. The young man watching from the sidelines did not understand in any way what our hero had done with milk, that it had become normal and people were not even sick of it. Our hero also decided to try it and noticed that this milk was rich and delicious. Turning to Tony, he thought that with this milk he could cook new recipes. Of course, this was only a plus for our hero. Upon returning home, Mr. Kainpo asked to use the kitchen immediately upon returning to the inn. The innkeeper explained to Lydia. Lydia was wondering what our hero was up to this time. Alice appeared next to her and told her that he was making new pastries again or something like that. Upon hearing this, everyone was surprised and the innkeeper did not understand what this family was talking about. Meanwhile, the young man began to cook. He decided to prepare the dough by mixing flour, eggs and purified milk, roll out the dough and bake. Laura had to cut the apples into thin slices for now, then add a little sugar and bake the apples in a frying pan. Finally, put all this dough on a plate, between the dough and the baked apple and put the baked apple cream again. The next moment, the sweetness of baked apples was served to the table, and the girls saw it and were happy. 
they were ready to try it right away, because they knew that the young man was making sweets. After taking a bite, everyone thought how delicious it was, but they couldn't imagine how Kane could have cooked such a thing at all. The young man was glad that everyone liked it and it was time to get down to business. Turning to Mother Lydia, he explained that these sweets are made from the milk of a cow bull. The young man talked to Tony about them, explained to his mother that they could cook rare new dishes from Hanako's milk in addition to such sweets, and offered them to hire the guys to work in the St. Rose family. He saw Lydia thinking, and our hero thought to himself that it probably sounded too unexpected. But, after a little thought, Lydia agreed with our hero and they were ready to hire these guys to work. Lydia informed that she would make a final decision when to meet with them in person and asked Lara what she could say about them. Lara, looking away a little, thought that they were family guys, so it was difficult to say anything specific. Our hero understood that Lara couldn't get a word out of herself. New pastries and a new dish will make the area more lively and prosperous. Therefore, it was necessary to go and see the guys before tomorrow's departure. The next day, our heroes visited the guys' house. Mother Lydia went to the barn where Tony and his family were staying. Tony and his sister met Lydia. Nana's fever subsided, thanks to the fast-acting medicine that Tony bought yesterday, and she thanked Kane for a long time. Mother Lydia immediately liked Nana, a polite girl and she would like to take a job in their house. Nana was very surprised by such offers, but agreed she was just looking for a safe place to live. They gave them a letter and some money for her to give to Randolph. Our heroes soon went to the castle, accompanied by a night patrol, which arrived two days later. When they said goodbye to our heroes, Nana asked Tony to bow more. Tony just silently watched our hero, who got into the carriage. All the residents of the city wished Miss Lydia a safe journey. The girl thanked them saying that they were good hosts. Then Tony finally decided to rush to Kane. And the mayor of the city, hearing how the young man was talking to Kane, did not understand how he dared to talk to the gentleman like that, shouting his name to the whole neighborhood. But Tony didn't listen to him at all. He just wanted to thank our hero for everything he had done for him. Happy and Kane offered to see him at the castle. The village of Tonga was really amazing. Kane has made friends with a demon tamer named Tony, and when he returns to the castle, he will prepare sweets with milk for Tony as well. So Kane got new friends and milk again. And so, passing the village, they went on their way.